when we broke for lunch, we were debating the motion on the estimates of revenue and expenditure. Member for Rosalie. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I feel hum humble as I rise to make yet another contribution on behalf of the people of Grosley to a budget debate. And Mr. Speaker, given the pronouncement made, I feel buoyed, feel excited, revved up, ready to go, Mr. Speaker. Energized, Mr. Speaker. I feel like Victor Ledgers, our historic long distance runner, ready to go. And like Julian Alfred, the best sprinter this country has produced, sprinting away this year, Mr. Speaker, ready to bring gold home to the people of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I need to take this opportunity to remind the people of Grosley that never will I hide, never will I stay away from them deliberately. I'm not hiding. Sometimes you are buried under the mountain of work that was left undone by a predecessor in both youth development and sports and of course the largest constituency in this island, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, let me thank first and foremost the Most High for continuing to give me the patience, the mental fortitude, and the ability to deliver on behalf of my people. Let me thank my mom, Caroline Kazemi, the entire Kazemi family who's in the gallery today who has been there with me from day one, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me thank my father, Mr. Stephen Gustav and the Gustav family, who are loyal and devoted soldiers in this battle. Let me hasten to thank Mr. Speaker, the SLPYO, the youth organization in Grosley, the SLPW, Mr. Speaker, the women's organization for the unwavering support for me, the Grosley Mayor and his Constituency Council for their work in the last year, and the office staff at Badoaj, Mr. Sharik Smith, Kelly Pierre-Louis, Nicola Duvay, Elva Flotten, and all the other staff working on the ground. Mr. Speaker, let me thank the Honorable Prime Minister who continues to bestow his trust in me and make the resources available for me to work on behalf for the people of Grosley. And so, Mr. Speaker, as I sat back and I listened to the presentation made by the Honorable Prime Minister on this year's estimates, I'm reminded of an axiom back in the day that postulates that if the opposition or any of his naysayers see this Minister of Finance walking on water, they will say it is because he cannot swim, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> While many in the region and in the world look at St. Lucia and understand the miracle of stability this Minister of Finance has brought to this country, his detractors will say it happened incidentally or accidentally, Mr. Speaker. But he is walking the walk, Mr. Speaker, and he is talking the talk, Mr. Speaker. Today, Mr. Speaker, there are a couple of things that are indisputable. For the first time since 1992, the St. Lucian economy experienced 
three consecutive years of economic growth above 3%, Mr. Speaker. For the first time, Mr. Speaker, since 1992. Our performance indicators reveal that the fundamentals of our economy are stronger than ever, Mr. Speaker. And that with the prudent financial management we've seen over the last year, we are headed in the right direction, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, as the Minister of Youth Development and Sports, it is incumbent upon me to go through this budget and to indicate some of our, our accomplishments and to indicate some of our plans briefly as we leave the nitty gritty for the policy debate, Mr. Speaker. And so, on page 665, Mr. Speaker, 174 on the head, 0408. I know this is a head that got every single parliamentarian excited, Mr. Speaker, because they saw rehabilitation of sports facilities. Every single one of them, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I must confess that I have 17 best friends, Mr. Speaker. All of a sudden, <laughs> 17, trust me. But they have others that want to come in. So. <laughs> the speaker as well. Mr. Speaker, that are blowing up my phone day and night, night and day, for their facilities, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I'm even reminded sometimes, Mr. Speaker, of where I lay my head, <laughs> Mr. Speaker in ensuring that we bring reprieve to the 140 courts and the 90 playing fields that are unfair, Helen, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the budget and an estimate of about 12 million for infrastructural work, Mr. Speaker, and capital work, Mr. Speaker, it is an impossible task, Mr. Speaker, without the national lotteries and the Minister of Finance and his his colleague from Ansari Canaries working to make it happen because every single constituency have in excess of six facilities, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I am happy to announce that we are going to be giving facilities some serious attention this year, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, while the Bellevue playing field, crossover park in Library, Minda Phillip Park, Grosley, the Otabo Court, Mr. Speaker, are currently ongoing or complete. This year, Mr. Speaker, we will continue on, we'll carry on, and we'll give special attention, Mr. Speaker, of course, to the VG playing field, Mr. Speaker, a field that is a legacy playing field that requires individual training programs beyond the hours of 6 p.m., Mr. Speaker. The Grand Ravine playing field, Mr. Speaker, an area in our country that has been a rich repository of talent, Mr. Speaker, in the Mabia Valley. The lighting facilities, Mr. Speaker. The Philip Masterley grounds, Mr. Speaker. The breeding ground of some of, some of the best track and field athletes and footballers, Mr. Speaker. The Marsha grounds, Mr. Speaker. Of course, we know of the history of Marsha in sports development, Mr. Speaker. The OJ playing field, Mr. Speaker, in the, the community of Labry to be given the lighting that they deserve, Mr. Speaker, as they continue to develop their football program. And I was very impressed with their first showing at the semi-pro league, but there is work to be done, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Leclerc playing field, and no other constituency has justified in sports development the upgrade of the football field than, Le than the Leclerc playing field, Mr. Speaker. This is a story of a community that went from the bottom of football the bottom tier won the bottom tier, got into the top tier, and within two years won the national football competition, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we have to provide that assistance, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Wayne playing field, Mr. Speaker, is an area where some of our best cricketers come from, including the likes of Gary Mafre and Darren Sami. And so this year, we'll continue to ensure that the lighting is installed and the proper sitting and change room for these individuals. And Mr. Speaker, in Denry South, with the likes of Ridders Stanislas playing semi-pro around the world, Mr. Speaker, with the likes of former players like Sabatas Hunt, Mr. Speaker, 
with the likes of ensuring that this community that always, like the Mabia Valley and Sufre, comes out in support of their athletes, this year is the year for their stands and change room to finally be erected, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we know that we have requests for the Bexor playing field. We have requests, Mr. Speaker, for continued upgrades to the Sufre Mini Stadium. Mr. Speaker, the lighting that was promised to the Cicero playing field that was erected on a pole. We are giving them a proper facility this year, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I would like to come in this honorable house and announce that every single facility will be fixed. But my mother didn't raise me that way. <laughs> we had to speak the truth. 140 courts, 90 playing fields. Sports requires total communal commitment for its development. We need to play our part in maintaining and upgrading facilities in this country. It cannot only be the ministry and SSI and the MP to do something, to pick up a rake, a cutlass, to help out with our facilities, Mr. Speaker. But we will do our absolute best, Mr. Speaker. And so, the people from Vanna that have been calling me day and night about the court, I say to you, relax. The member for ancillary canneries calls me more, Mr. Speaker. And they will be getting the attention, Mr. Speaker. The attention that they need. And so, Mr. Speaker, while I push through, and uh, of course, I believe in a lot of discussion for the policy debate, we as a ministry, we've invested over the last year into creating history. For the first time, we had Highland champs on a weekend in this great country, Mr. Speaker. At the Sufre Mini Stadium, more than 8,000 people in attendance, Mr. Speaker. For the first time in our history, we launched a semi-professional football league for our young men, Mr. Speaker. For the first time in our history, Mr. Speaker, we opened a high-performance center for cricket development, Mr. Speaker. The best cricketers in high-performance, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we continue to work for the first time a 100% solar lit facility is erected in this country, Mr. Speaker, and that is at the Corinth for playing field, Mr. Speaker. And so, that's the constituency of Grosley. I look forward to our grand opening in the month of April, Mr. Speaker. And so, while we transition Grosley into a mini stadium, Mr. Speaker, we'll continue to ensure that the pie is spread through the length and breadth of this country, Mr. Speaker. And that is how you establish sports development. The National Aquatic Center, Mr. Speaker, for the first time in our history, a 50-meter pool in the OECS established for high-performance training in the sport of swimming. And Mr. Speaker, if you have not heard, there was a government that came into this honorable house, promised to remove, to reduce, and eventually remove VAT, Mr. Speaker. And we waited six years, and it never happened. But a government of the St. Lucia Labour Party, under the champion from Castries East, made the bold decision and removed VAT from all the sporting equipment for our young people, Mr. Speaker. And so, we saw from our previous budget line, $200,000 for the transition of Julian Alfred from a collegiate athlete into a professional. Mr. Speaker, we provided the support to her, Mr. Speaker. Mental training and physiotherapy and psychology, Mr. Speaker. And all her practice and gym, Mr. Speaker. And for the first time in our history, a St. Lucian from Cicero, champion of the 60-meter sprint of the world, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we'll continue to do our best to ensure that our athletes get the attention and we continue to press ahead with the work of our people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to move quickly to the budget that, we, that is before us and how this budget really impacts the lives of the people of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. When you dive into this budget, you will realize, Mr. Speaker, 
that the efforts of the member for Castro South in tourism is really yielding huge results, huge results for the people of St. Lucia. And Mr. Speaker, under 46, subsection 0043, Mr. Speaker, under the ORTCP, we see a line item of over $2 million, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, last year in the community of Grosley, this year, Mr. Speaker, we saw under this line the official groundbreaking ceremony for the Grosley Recreational Park, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, an attempt was made to sneak this project in before the last election. Mr. Speaker, we saw, woke up one morning and all of a sudden we saw a structure on Pigeon Island, Mr. Speaker. Brief investigation revealed to us no DCA approval, no planning approval, no pro pro proper procurement done, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before we even got in, materials that were purchased had gone missing from this facility, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, the little boy from Maritere Street, Grosley, born and raised on Bay Street, where it is being erected, when he was elected by the people, ensured that we had DCA approval, planning approval, all approvals, Mr. Speaker, a proper tender process, a procurement process, Mr. Speaker, undertaken, launching a search of materials missing, and those materials both found, Mr. Speaker. And so a contractor identified after a competitive bidding process, Mr. Speaker, and the project has commenced in earnest, no pun intended. <laughs> the project has commenced in earnest, Mr. Speaker. The project is going well, Mr. Speaker. And I invite anybody, when you go to Guru's Day Friday night, just pass through Pigeon Point and see the great progress when it is done properly, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are hoping to complete this by July, August this year, and open it up to a few vendors for employment opportunities, we're hoping to host some events at this venue, including weddings, social events, and of course, in the future, jazz events. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Jerome Montut Road is in pristine condition, thanks to the member from Castries North. I'm coming to that, Mr. Speaker. Very good road, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we see under community tourism, Mr. Speaker, a continued thrust to bring touristic activities in our community. And last year, Mr. Speaker, we had our historic Moshi music or Creole, Moshi jazz, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this event was never held under the previous administration. Started under this government, Mr. Speaker, previous government, honorable member for Sufre, ensured that it was done at a high level and stopped for almost six years. And it took the government of this St. Lucia Labour Party to bring it back, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thousands attended, Mr. Speaker. It's a free show. Vendors sold out all their drinks in record time. And of course, other commercial businesses saw upticks in their activities, Mr. Speaker. And so, this year, we have in Moshi Jazz again, Mr. Speaker. People are already telling me Moshi Topi T. But we are having Moshi Jazz again, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this year we are bringing in a French band, Mr. Speaker. And when we talk about community tourism, Mr. Speaker, we see so many individuals already booking Airbnbs in the communities of Grosile, Lafay, Moshi, Kaimaje, in anticipation of Moshi Jazz, Mr. Speaker. Boats will be coming across, Mr. Speaker. We'll also be having DYP, Mr. Speaker. Impulse ban, Mr. Speaker, of what service. Mr. Speaker, it's a free show. I invite you, Mr. Speaker, to come in early. We invite everybody to leave home early because of the traffic, but we commence at 7 p.m. We will have parking for the speaker, Mr. Speaker, and the AG and everybody, so we will be good, Mr. Speaker. This year, it will be bigger and even better, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I go through this budget, Mr. Speaker, that I so richly endorse, under the Ministry of Infrastructure, I would not doubt that every single MP went to those line items first. But I will say for me, I will confess, that the desire 
the hunger for infrastructural projects, Mr. Speaker, is insatiable in the constituency of Groselin. And so, Mr. Speaker, as much as sometimes I am considered avaricious because they see things happen in my constituency, it is because I have no choice, Mr. Speaker, given the dynamics of this blossoming constituency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in the financial year 2023-2024, I must say that the Ministry of Infrastructure has provided support to the people of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. For those who insist on saying this is happening in Grosley and not other areas, let me provide you with some context, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this country has over 100,000 vehicles, Mr. Speaker. Over 100,000 vehicles. On this island, almost 90% of them would traverse the Grosley constituency at some point on a monthly basis, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this constituency has the highest level of migration. So more construction is expected. Heavy equipment on our roads, Mr. Speaker. It has the highest level of economic activity. More businesses setting up. More pressure on the roads in the constituency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there's more traffic. There's more demand. There's more settlements. And therefore, more need for more roads, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, given that Grosley has the highest population, Mr. Speaker, and the continued shift in, Mr. Speaker, there's more demand. And so, we have seen some interventions on our roads in Grosley. I have to say a special thank you to the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Infrastructure, along with a Chief Engineer, Renata, who has been very, very, very patient with the amount of calls that these individuals get daily from my phone. Amount of calls. As long as they call me, and I guarantee you, I filled many, many calls, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we were able to do the Casabar Road, Mr. Speaker. Complete the Casabar Road, a road for 30 years people have been asking for. We were able to do many of the roads, Mr. Speaker, in Beau And it's still ongoing because, Mr. Speaker, again, high population movement, high individuals moving out and constructing away from main roads, and more demand and more demand for some intervention, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have commenced work on emerald development, Mr. Speaker, in the community of Corin. And Mr. Speaker, almost every single parliamentarian came to me at some point and said to me, Parliamentary Rep for Grosley, I am not from your constituency, but you need to do something about emerald development, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we've commenced that road, and we are hoping that it will be complete within the next two weeks, Mr. Speaker. Corinth Road, Mr. Speaker, the concrete road, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that is another road that people were clamoring for for a very long time, Mr. Speaker. Did it under CDP, Mr. Speaker? I have to identify where I do some of my roads because we have to get infrastructure with everything. Mr. Speaker, another road that has been requested for many years, Mr. Speaker, the link road between Nobe and Asu Canal, Mr. Speaker. That is a road that people were asking for for a very long time. And with the traffic to and from Castries, we have finally gotten this road done, Mr. Speaker, for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. This is a road that is for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Asu Canal stairs and footpath, Mr. Speaker, Another area where we have high instances of the elderly requiring some footpath, some stairs to access their homes, Mr. Speaker. Complete, Mr. Speaker. Viking Traders Road and Drain, Mr. Speaker. Another area, Mr. Speaker, after the flood of November 6, the residents were really nervous about an incident like this. And so we built a proper drain and a proper road for these individuals, Mr. Speaker. Lawi, the, 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 the Marisil Road, Mr. Speaker, and the many others that are too numerous for me to mention, given the fact that I have to be complete in an hour, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> but so, the people of Groselais have no doubt 
that they've elected a worker, Mr. Speaker. They've not elected a UWP, but they've elected a worker, not a joker, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, when you have a constituency the size of Grosley, you must hit the ground, the ground running early. And that is what I did, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to the year of infrastructure proposed by this Minister of Finance. And so, Mr. Speaker, on page 631, under reconstruction and rehabilitation of roads, we are certainly hoping to get some interventions in communities such as Labon, where we have free critical roads that are absolutely necessary. Degazo, five major roads. Inglewood, which has a loop in dire need of attention, and any time I can take it on a tour. Monsepa, four roads needed. Monier, ten roads needed. Piat, five, including the worst road in Grosley, Mr. Speaker. Asu Canal, four. Corinth, 15, Mr. Speaker. Marisil, top of the world in that area, seven, of which we are going to start one very soon, Mr. Speaker. Bordeaux, Tuya, Rejri, five. Sugar City, Rejri, Monjiro, six. Lafay, Kaimaje, four. Rivemita, Tito Fest, six. Deramo, Monsito, four. Moshi, New Development, Ravin, Makop, Magwetut, nine. Rodney Bay, five. Bonte, five. Boseju, five. Kazaba, five. Cape State, Massad, 15 roads. Over 100 roads in the constituency of Grosley being asked and pressured for. Mr. Speaker, the people of Grosley will not get them all. They will never get them all, Mr. Speaker. That is an absolute fact. But it's incumbent upon me as the parliamentary rep to stand here today and express to them what the realities are. Because many of them believe that their road is the only road. And to be honest, I understand with them. Their families come, their friends come. But sometimes it's embarrassing, shocks destroyed. But we've measured and costed over a hundred roads in dire need of interventions in the constituency of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. I challenge anyone at any time to go to any of these roads that I mentioned and justify it not being done. Anytime. And Mr. Speaker, we will not do all. But with this parliamentary rep, we will try our best to do as many as possible, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, of particular interest to the people of Grosley coming out of this budget is found under 0504, the rehabilitation of the Julian Hunt Highway, Mr. Speaker. This is a highway, Mr. Speaker, that is not going to be done solely for the people of Grosley. This is a highway that is needed by the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, for productivity, Mr. Speaker, for enhancement and development, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, a budget of 8.3, I know, is a drop in the budget, in the bucket, as we hope to bring some light to this road, Mr. Speaker. We know what happened, Mr. Speaker. An agreement, a loan identified with the Kuwaiti government. And of course, when a previous government came in, it couldn't touch it, couldn't manipulate it. The party suffered a AP, so you're just Tiwela. And so, six years, we waited until the final year, an intervention suggested in Rodney Bay, Mr. Speaker. And now, Mr. Speaker, we have to do what we need to do for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Still under Ministry of Infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, under 0289, there's an estimate of $3 million under rivers and water costs maintenance. The people of Grosley desperately need some assistance. This is why I'm very happy that the Minister of Finance indicated that this year of infrastructure is not just for roads, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker, we have addressed a few river courses that were problematic after November 6, including, Mr. Speaker, Piat retaining wall, the Monier drain, Inglewood's drains that we've, we've commenced, and of course, the Viking traders, as we spoke about earlier. But, Mr. Speaker, we have a scary situation, Mr. Speaker. Scary. And anybody, Anybody who witnessed what happened on November 6 knows that this is indeed a scary situation, Mr. Speaker. In Flamboyant Drive, where the river, Mr. Speaker, on that day, 
We saw water over houses, Mr. Speaker. And so, up till this day, this river and waterway still requires some level of attention. We have houses that are compromised in the Flamboyant Drive area, Mr. Speaker. In Granivier, near Rainbow 2000, similar situation, need for retaining walls, Mr. Speaker. Grand Riviere, Corinth, near Wilmer's Bar, similar situation, very desperate situation where the river is very close to houses, Mr. Speaker. Piat, near the Nazarene Church, Mr. Speaker, we've started some intervention there, but we need to continue that into where Get Through lives and the surrounding community, Mr. Speaker. Inglewood, Mr. Speaker. Corinth near the Samsons, Mr. Speaker. Corinth behind John Michel, Mr. Speaker. Another scary area from November 6th. The water came into most of those houses, Mr. Speaker. Widow Island Gas Road, Mr. Speaker. The bridge is now woefully inadequate. The Bois de Bridge area, Mr. Speaker. Bonte, Tuya, Riviermita, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker, this year must be the year where we, as much as possible, allay the fears of these people in these communities. Still traumatized, still calling my phone when it rains heavily to say to me, Mr. Parliamentary Rep, don't forget us. We need some intervention, Mr. Speaker. And so, in addition to this, Mr. Speaker, under 0456, we see an estimate of $1 million for slope stabilization and retaining walls. We're certainly hoping that these areas can be given some attention, and we'll be counting on this for these areas that are desperate, extremely dangerous. Some of the areas, such as Bonte, Mr. Speaker, we have a balcony on the Bonte Road that they narrowed down. Another very scary area that we need some slope stabilization. Lafay, near the Adventist Church as well, on the opposite side of the, the Adventist Church, and of course, Asu Canal, some slope civilization. Mr. Speaker, under 505 road safety, we see an amount of $200,000 estimated. Mr. Speaker, in my two and a half years in this position, I've had major challenges as it pertains to road safety, Mr. Speaker. Many calls about animals being killed in Flamboyant Drive, in um, Winwood Island Gas Road because of speeding. And we really need to have a discussion on how it is we move forward as it pertains to sleeping policemen and some form of an activity to discourage speeding. But we've seen motorists being very irresponsible. A national discourse may come, but the people of Grosley need speed bumps. And so I've commenced in ensuring that some of our areas get those speed bumps. The Widow Island Gas Road, we ensured that we erected one here, in fact two, and we're going to continue to be very considerate given the realities of traffic in the north. But we've requested speed ons for the Monsepa area, the Winwood Island Gas Road, done, Vesiqui, Grosley Town, Riviamita, Mr. Speaker, Bonte and Corinth. Mr. Speaker, we were able to get some um, other interventions done in other areas and have some community meetings with regards to speeding. And so we're hoping that as we go forward, that we can have a full-fledged program for the entire island and we can see what we can do about irresponsible driving. Mr. Speaker, under physical development and urban renewal, under 050, we see an estimate of $7.5 million for land administration. Mr. Speaker, the people of Monsepa will be smiling. As I remember during the election campaign of 2021, the now Prime Minister visited the people of Montsepa and assured them that they will be given opportunity to obtain the land. And this is not power, GT. But the time has come. I am very happy, Mr. Speaker, with the work of Terence St. Clair and his crew, and of course, the Honorable Member for Castries North, who have commenced the works to rationalize these areas for the people of Montsepa, and it's coming soon, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we saw during the year, electricity and pole lighting recommenced, Mr. Speaker. We had a constituency with a large population, with a large amount of dark spots. And I'm grateful that the Ministry of Infrastructure have commenced some work, and the work continues as we bring Grosley back to light, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, on the national security, we know all too well, and I've given all the anecdotes of what the population of Groselay can be on a weekend. Population way beyond 45,000 already in terms of um, people, and the influx of workers, the influx of tourists, the influx of individuals coming in, can well exceed over 60,000 on a weekend. For some reason, Mr. Speaker, a plan to establish a Groselay Northern headquarter was squashed under the previous administration. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to announce that under this government that the work has commenced and is continuing in earnest at the Groselay Northern headquarters, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I was buoyed when I went to this facility and I saw more than 20 young men engaged in work, Mr. Speaker. These were 20 young men who could have given, been given this opportunity under the previous administration. But for some reason, you party sa touche, you mete a su kote, Mr. Speaker. But this government is working to get it done for the people. Mr. Speaker, under the Ministry of Equity, Social Transformation, we as a government continue to work to develop the social fabric of our society. And in the case of Grosley, we continue to provide support to a number of programs in this constituency. On page 647, 404, Rehabilitation of Community Centers, we see a line item for the Grosley Human Resource Development of $12,000. And I'm happy that we continue our social programming in this community center. We are hoping that we get some support for the Lafay Mothers and Fathers Hall, the Rivemeter Mothers and Fathers Hall, and of course, we continue to work on establishing the, growth, the Grand River Community Center. Mr. Speaker, we continue to push some of our programs under the Ministry of Equity with our very capable, very capable social transformation officer, David Franksen Moise. And we continue to ensure that we can do more. We have a Music and Me program. We have a dance program. And Mr. Speaker, we have a peanut butter pantry at the HRDC that continues to provide breakfast for young children who are on their way to school, Mr. Speaker, the Grosley Prime and Infant, that may not have a can of tuna fish, bag of salt fish, of, of, of crackers, any other system, a tin of milk, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we will be coming in collaboration with RISE to the Ministry of Equity for some funds because this has blossomed into a national project, Mr. Speaker. We have individuals from as far as Monrepo, Labri, um, Dera Mo, Deriso, coming to the pantry, Mr. Speaker, on their way to Grosley. And of course, Mr. Speaker, we cannot turn them away. And so we will be engaging the Ministry of Equity under some of the funds and some of the activities we see for some assistance with this peanut butter pantry, Mr. Speaker. It's needed. I want to say congratulations to Venus Cherry and his team for continuing to push and to get finances from all walks of life to ensure that this pantry is put together, Mr. Speaker. Under 57057, we certainly hope we can get to implement some after-school programs for our young people in other communities, communities, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this year, we are also hoping to launch our Youth in Agriculture program at the Grand Rivier Primary School. And we've already commenced some clearing, some work with the individuals from the school, the principal, and of course, the custodian at the school. And we are hoping that we can get some assistance from the Ministry of Equity and the Ministry of Agriculture to have a comprehensive program, a youth in agriculture program at the Grand River Primary School. We continue to work with the Ministry of Social Transformation for the Area M Act for the Community Courts and ICT Center in Labon because this community absolutely deserves it. Mr. Speaker, we are also able to give, under the Ministry of Equity, some financial support through the Flow Bundle Program for those communities, Mr. Speaker, that did not have access to the internet, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to know how much time I have left. 18 minutes. We carry on nicely. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under the Ministry of Housing and Local Government, page 643 under 0366, 0336, National Housing Assistance Program. Mr. Speaker, 
I have one of my co-workers in the building today, Kelly Pierre-Louis. She's in the gallery. And for some people, they've seen different individuals act and function in that position at my office, simply because the influx of people who go to my constituency office on a daily basis, and on a Wednesday, Mr. Speaker, it's almost unbearable to so many. It is absolutely unfair what is compensation, given the fact the pressure that she would face would be four times more than any other constituency. But Mr. Speaker, one of the areas that provide a lot of pressure for my constituency office is this housing assistance program, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have currently over 700 applications at our office, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, despite the fact that we informed each individual that we'll only provide an assistance up to about 5,000, Mr. Speaker, we have invoices, Mr. Speaker, of over $1.1 million in requests at our office, Mr. Speaker. It should be no surprise. No surprise given the dynamics of Grizzly. And they come into the office like you lay a poison. They want it now, Mr. Speaker. It's a lot of pressure. But I'm happy that I have staff that could keep calm, Mr. Speaker, and ask our people to be patient. From the 700, we've only been able to assist 89, Mr. Speaker. 89 checks have been issued. And we continue to beg for patience as this program continues to unfold. This is the difficulty with this constituency. But Mr. Speaker, I must pause to say that I absolutely love my job, Mr. Speaker. I absolutely enjoy serving the people of Grosley. Despite the pressures, Ipa open phone Despite the pressures, Mevini Ipatela. Despite the pressures, I went to his mother on Maritary Street and I told his mother to call him. And despite the pressures, I enjoy serving the people of Grosley. I genuinely love the people of Grosley. And so I can say to them that despite of the fact that we have 600 and almost 20 applications left, be patient. We are working to assist you, Mr. Speaker. This is because the impression is that Grosley is fine because when you drive the road, you only see big houses. But the sum total of plywood houses in Grosley far exceeds many constituencies, Mr. Speaker. And so the pressures are there, but I'm not going to crumble under pressure. I'm going to smile, wake up every morning, and work on behalf for the people of Grosley, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under subsection 318, Municipal Administrative Town and Vigit Councils, Mr. Speaker, we see an allocation of $3 million. And we're certainly hoping that another entity I feel sorry for daily is our town council, Mr. Speaker. The pressure in Rodney Bay, Mr. Speaker, to clean it up. The pressure. Mr. Speaker, it's not just a town council anymore. It's the Grosley Constituency Council which includes Moshi, Deramo, Labon, Grand Rivier, Mornier, all these places, Rivier Mitton, and the likes, Mr. Speaker. I feel sorry for my council, Mr. Speaker, because of the pressure that they have to bear, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the member for Viewfort South is not there, but Viewfort South has double the council workers as Grosley, Mr. Speaker. And Grosley has three times the population, Mr. Speaker. This must be rectified, Mr. Speaker, somehow, because I get calls daily from the member from Castry South, who is the Minister of Tourism. Minister Rodney Bay, Mr. Mr. What's happening in Rodney Bay? What's happening on the main road? And he also calls us a constituent, by the way. But the pressure, Mr. Speaker, and I'm so I'm glad to see $3 million allocated, and we can have a plan forward. I'm very grateful to the member for Central Castries and local government who has provided additional assistance to us last year. We are eternally grateful, but again, again, it's not going to ever be enough. And so whatever we can get additional, we'll appreciate it. 
Mr. Speaker, on the 404 Community Development Services, Mr. Speaker, the Grand Riviere Community Center has commenced, Mr. Speaker. I'm very happy, Mr. Speaker, that this area, and here we see a design of it, erected very near the field. We will be fixing the court. We have some developments of Crown Lands in that area. And of course, the field is earmarked for some lighting. And so the community of Grand Riviere, under this parliamentary rep, will never be the same, Mr. Speaker. We are transforming lives, Mr. Speaker, in this community. Mr. Speaker, Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries on page 626. I'm smiling because the member of Den Reserve always smiles. And so I'm joining him in smiling when we see an allocation of $850,000 for repairs to fishing ports. I've been asking, and I'll ask again, the fishermen of Grosely are tired of the rust. They are tired and they need some assistance. I am internally grateful for the fads that has been provided by the Ministry of Fish Aggregating Devices. And I must say you learn a lot when you become a, a minister that this device is so appreciated by the fishermen. And so I thank the Ministry of Fisheries, but we need some upgrade to that infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. And as I said, in Granivier, Youthing Agriculture Program is coming. Mr. Speaker, I'm indeed impressed with the work on stream for the constituency of Grosley in the financial year at our learning institutions. Mr. Speaker, on page 649, line item 215, Plant and Equipment Unit, National Infrastructure Maintenance under the Ministry of Education. I look forward to some assistance to the Grand River Primary School and the Moshi Primary School because some much needed attention is definitely called for. I appreciate some of the work that has been done in most of these schools, but for sure, I will be bothering the member for cash for Denry North as he continues to help me carry on in this constituency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the teachers and the principals of these schools, they continue to call, and I'm happy that we have an estimated $14.1 million for some repairs to schools. Mr. Speaker, under the same ministry, Grosley Library, I am eternally thankful to the honorable member for Denry North, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when you have a cabinet of people who understand the development thrust of young people, and you sit in that cabinet, Mr. Speaker, you go home and you say, thank you, Lord. As a former minister for youth development and sports, as a former educator, the member for Denry North said, it is unconscionable that the Grosley Library was closed for years under the previous administration. That it was unbelievable that this library in the most populous constituency was not available to young people for a critical aspect of reading. And they blame everything on this current administration when it comes to youth development, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am eternally thankful to the Honorable Minister. After years of years, the Grosley Library will be reopening in the coming weeks, Mr. Speaker. And I'm very happy that these people will get the opportunity to read in the privacy of a library, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and the Ministry of Health, Mr. Speaker, I am indeed thankful to the member for Viewfort North for the efforts placed into developing the health infrastructure of the most populous constituency on island. I often explain that on a weekend, the sum total of people in Grosley far exceeds the population of St. Kitts. I'm happy I needed water so I can pause. The sum total of people living in a Grosley constituency on a weekend far exceeds the population of the entire St. Kitts. I challenge anybody to say otherwise. Thankfully, with this Minister of Health, despite the Grosley Polyclinic not having an ambulance for the entire five years of the previous administration, hey, the Grosley Polyclinic did not have an ambulance before the people chanted baby for Grosley, Mr. Speaker. 
they did not have an ambulance available to them, Mr. Speaker. And under this Minister of Health, the Grosley people can breathe again, literally. Mr. Speaker, and so I'm glad that we're able to provide an ambulance to the nurses and doctors, Mr. Speaker. Additional transportation to move specimens, Mr. Speaker, at the Grosley Polyclinic. And so on the page 652, line item 0279, Health System Strengthening Project, I'm hoping to see work we'll commence on the extension of the Grosley Polyclinic. The nurses continue to be patient as they ask for basic facilities like a simple lunchroom, Mr. Speaker, as they continue to work under tremendous pressure, especially on a Friday, Mr. Speaker. And so we're certainly hoping that under this line item, the people of Grosley can count on the Grosley Polyclinic, Mr. Speaker. And so, I am very confident, Mr. Speaker, very confident that this year will be a better year for the people of Grosley. 2023 was tough, but we braved the toughness, Mr. Speaker. The year 2023, 2024, that budget year, it brought in significant amount of progress in this country. When we came in in 2021, we were faced with a fiscal crisis that required us to tighten our belts and to make huge sacrifices on behalf of the people of St. Lucia. Mr. Mr. Speaker, in the fiscal year... Ten minutes left. I'm wrapping up, Mr. Speaker. I'll leave down out. Mr. Speaker, in the fiscal year 2023-2024, in the fiscal year 2023-2024, I was absolutely astonished. And I think all of us who sat here and listened to that figure had a moment of reflection, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister announced that under 2023-2024, we paid $106 million in DFCs, Mr. Speaker. 106 million dollars and so when i go to the constituency of grosley and people have conversations by the football field and by the beach and bay street and seaview and i hear certain individuals from times past beat their chests about roads they constructed this is the government that is paying for these roads mr speaker this is the government so when they take credit, Mr. Speaker, it's almost like saying, I left you with a heavy debt, and then there's an individual paying that debt, and you beat your chest for leaving a heavy debt, Mr. Speaker. Let me explain that to the people of Grosley. They came in, Mr. Speaker, and they took roads on credit, Mr. Speaker. A lot of the roads in the meetings they speak of these roads are being paid under the government of the St. Lucia Labour Party, Mr. Speaker. So when they take credit for it, I go and I said, we are the ones paying for it, Mr. Speaker. And so we do not have the best health and, uh, Mr. Speaker, we do not have the best security system in our country. And so when I hear some of the discourse about a health and security levy that we as a government have put in place to move these very two institutions forward, I marvel, Mr. Speaker. From a levy, I'll say it again, this government collected only $18 million, while the total cost of health and security amounts to under the previous financial year, more than $275 million, Mr. Speaker. We collected $18 million. Mr. Speaker, this year, we are projected to collect $35 million to cushion the projected cost of $350 million that we need for health and security. Mr. Speaker, why do some feel the need to play politics why do they feel the need 
to play politics with the reality that befalls us when it comes to health and security in this country. I want to say to the young people of this country, there is no such thing as a free lunch, Mr. Speaker, because we see permeating for our communities this feeling of entitlement sometimes and that we can just get this without any cost. The reality of development is that we must have some form of resource mobilization. And I say to young people, a mobilization of $45 million to cushion $350 million is well worth the cost. Do not let them kidnap your minds. Do not let them fool you on Instagram, on Facebook, with the flashing mirrors, and the rides behind pickup trucks, Mr. Speaker. In the hot sun, Mr. Speaker. Do not let them come to you and tell you how your future should go. Simply because this current government understands fiscal responsibility, Mr. Speaker. Member for so, Mr. In the Speaker. Cool, in the coolness of this chamber, you have five minutes left. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, let me once again thank the people of Grosley. We we'll go back to them for their support and patience with this government. We are not perfect. We continue to work hard. In Grosley, we recently completed, as I said, the footpath, the Nassau Canal, the Marcel Road, the peanut butter pantry is there. We end in period poverty. We've been hosting community block meetings so that we can serve you better, Mr. Speaker. Whether it's under a bus shop, a bus stop, on the street light, Mr. Speaker, whether it is in the school, community center, we've been hosting those meetings to hear from you. I look forward to continuing to connect with everyone, Labor, Flabo, and of course, in the case of Grosley, PIP, Party in Power, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to working with Black, White, Asian, Latino, Arab, Bantu. I look forward to connecting with all of you, Mr. Speaker. Let's work together. Let's work together to ensure Grosley remains the best, most progressive constituency in the entire OECS, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I hereby support the estimates of revenue and expenditure for this fiscal year 2024-2025. I thank you. The member for Denry North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have had to speak after several members in my 10 plus years in the Parliament, but never before have I felt it being such a tall order to come on the heels of a presentation like this from the member for Grosley, my friend, Mr. Speaker, and a young man in whom I am exceptionally proud ever since he won his seat very handsomely in Grosley and took his rightful place in this chamber as the duly elected parliamentary rep. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I rise on behalf of the people of Olio, Despin, Gadet, Larissus, Lapel, Denier Rivier, Belmont, Grand Ravine, Richfort, and Grand Rivier, Mr. Speaker. And these communities, when they come together, they constitute the constituency known as Denry North. And the residents of these communities, Mr. Speaker, have stood with me on this journey 
and in my quest to better lives in the, in the said communities from 2011 up to today. And Mr. Speaker, on three different occasions, they have, on three different occasions, three different elections lined up outside the various polling stations to repose their confidence in the majority in my ability to articulate their concerns and give expression, Mr. Speaker, to whatever it is they believe can impact them on a national level. And Mr. Speaker, I can tell you from where I stand today, notwithstanding all the utterances from the other side, whenever the member for Castries East and Prime Minister decides to call the next election, I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, that the people of Denry North, without fuss, with very little fanfare, from Baflora to the Badlil, the refrain will once again be unambiguous, Sean again. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, there's no better news that can come the way of the United Workers' Party supporters in Denry North than to hear that Sean Edward is retiring and is not contesting elections again. But Mr. Speaker, I have news for them. I am ready for the next election. Yes. I am ready to commence my fourth term in this honorable chamber. But I know the elections might not be on the horizon because we have so much more to fix and we have so much more to do for the people of St. Lucia. And so, Mr. Speaker, I stand on behalf of the people of Denry North to wholeheartedly support the estimates as presented by the member for Castries East. Mr. Speaker, I remember on the eve of the last general election, 2021, I was the guest on a talk show, chat and chill or chill and chat. And the question was put to me, why Philip J. Pierre for prime minister? And without hesitation, Mr. Speaker, and the tape is there for anybody to review, I responded, he's honest, he's experienced, he has steady hands, he has led some of the most important ministries and departments of government. And Mr. Speaker, in the current environment that confronted our country, he was the best option for St. Lucia and St. Lucians. And so, Mr. Speaker, in the past two and a half years, the Prime Minister and member for Castries East has demonstrated that he is indeed the man for the job. Mr. Speaker, the estimates of revenue and expenditure and allocations to the various programs across agencies is yet another demonstration, Mr. Speaker, of the astute nature and the financial management acumen that the Prime Minister brings to the job of Prime Ministership. And Mr. Speaker, from a personal standpoint, I have been fortunate to have served on the two Prime Ministers in my political career. And I remember when entering government for the first time in 2011, Mr. Speaker, I served on the member for Fairfort South. And for me, Mr. Speaker, every Monday when I took my seat in the cabinet, sitting between the then MP for Sufre, the Honorable Harold Dalso, and the senator responsible in the cabinet for physical development, the Honorable Stanley Felix, I used to remark to them very quietly, Mr. Speaker, that I was getting an education that people had to pay thousands of dollars to receive overseas that they referred to as tuition or university education. And so, Mr. Speaker, I learned a lot serving under the member for Viewfort South. And today I am blessed and privileged to be serving with another prime minister, Mr. Speaker, who has demonstrated that his demeanor and his posture is predicated on a genuine love and concern for the people of this country. Mr. Speaker, we have a budget of approximately $1.8 billion. And Mr. Speaker, when I look at the agencies under my ministerial watch, I am extremely satisfied and pleased with the figures that have been assigned to my various departments. Mr. Speaker, let us look at the Department of Sustainable Development. This year, or this financial year, the Department of Sustainable Development has been allocated a recurrent amount of 
$497,800 and a capital allocation of $3,344,700 giving us a, an agency total of $25,842,500. Mr. Speaker, a significant amount as has always been the case for the financing of the Department of Sustainable Development comes from friendly governments and international agencies such as UNEP, UNFCCC, JEF, etc. And on the sustainable development, Mr. Speaker, the grants and contributions, there are two agencies in the remit of that department that receive grants from the government of St. Lucia, namely the PMA or the Peter Management Area, which receive $300,000, and the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, which gets, Mr. Speaker, an allocation or a grant of $10,639,416. Mr. Speaker, the Department of Education receives a sizable chunk of the national budget. Mr. Speaker, for recurrent expenditure or the recurrent allocation for the Ministry of Education is a whopping $237 million, $230,500. And the capital allocation of $24,661,700, giving the Ministry of Education a total amount of $261,000. $892,200. And this figure, Mr. Speaker, accounts for 13.8% of the national budget. And when you combine, Mr. Speaker, the $261 million for education with the $25 million from sustain for sustainable development, the agency, Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology, and Vocational Training receives 15% of the national budget. And so, Mr. Speaker, the adage is applicable. To whom much is given, much is expected. And so, Mr. Speaker, our government has predicated its programming on a very robust education agenda. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education has received $5,102,900 as an increase in the provision of services. Mr. Speaker, $370,000 for the expansion of the school bus subsidy program. We have also received $589,703 for teacher promotion upgrades and summary reinstatements for primary and secondary school teachers. $100,000 dollars, Mr. Speaker, for replacement of teachers on study leave with pay. And teachers can only be granted study leave with pay once the memos have been taken to the cabinet and the cabinet of ministers after having examined the various circumstances presented by the Ministry of Education, cabinet makes a determination as to whether somebody is deserving of study leave with pay or not. Mr. Speaker, we have in the budget this year an allocation of $65,679 for the appointment of a second vice principal for the Viewfort Comprehensive Secondary School. Mr. Speaker, the enrollment at the Viewfort Comprehensive Secondary School is sizable. And the performance of this school, Mr. Speaker, particularly in regional examination scape, has been outstanding. And only two weeks ago, we witnessed once again the exploits of the students from the Viewfort Comprehensive Secondary School school on the tracks at the island champs. And so, Mr. Speaker, we believe that we have to strengthen um, administration and management at that school to enable them to achieve even more than what they have been achieving. Mr. Speaker, there's an allocation of $250,000 for strengthening mathematics instruction in schools because we have a serious problem as it relates to the performances of our students in mathematics exams, both at the local level and at the regional level. Mr. Speaker, we've been allocated $148,398 for the registration of new early childhood centers, one of which will be, Mr. Speaker, established in the Mabuya Valley or the Denry North constituency, if you prefer. Mr. Speaker, the government of the St. Lucia Labour Party between 2011 and 2016 
under the NICE program saw the need to assign assistance to principals of primary schools to help them meet the daily administrative duties that they had to contend with, Mr. Speaker, whilst providing clinical supervision for the teachers um, at the various schools. This year, Mr. Speaker, we are going to reinstate the principal assistance program. But we will resort to a phased approach where in the first instance, Mr. Speaker, with $392,259, we will be, Mr. Speaker, um, reinstating 21 of the, the principal's assistants, and we will decide which schools will be um, benefiting from the first tranche of monies received from the Ministry of Finance. And we have 71 schools, Mr. Speaker, and we are only facilitating 21 in the first instance. The Prime Minister is whispering to me, Mr. Speaker, almost to suggest, and I do not want to misquote or misread him, that, yes, he said I can't read his lips, but he's saying that maybe before the financial year is over, he might be able to cover every one of the 71 schools. Mr. Speaker, $221,704 for additional guidance, counseling services, and psychosocial support. Mr. Speaker, our children are troubled. They are disturbed and some are traumatized. And Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister in his wisdom has seen the need to give the Ministry of Education an additional $221,704 for additional guidance counseling services and psychosocial support. Mr. Speaker, $518,040 increase for two years of contribution to the TVET Council. Mr. Speaker, we are extremely big on TVET and a full statement on the TVET program in the Ministry of Education will be made during the debate um, during the policy debate, which will be held next month. Mr. Speaker, $344,885 for the establishment of a National Accreditation Council, $341,000 for compensation or damages for situations on school compound, insurance, and things of that sort. Mr. Speaker, in this year's budget, there is a little more than half a million dollars for payment of arrears to the University of the West Indies Council of Law. And the situation was so bad, Mr. Speaker, having inherited a huge debt to the, Minister, to the University of the West Indies, that the UE was saying to the government of St. Lucia, we are not prepared to receive your law students until such time you can sit with us and come to an agreement in terms of how um, the outstanding monies would, would, would have been addressed. Mr. Speaker, we also have in the budget this year $520,000 for an increase in provision for first-generation scholarship with Monroe College. And in the policy statement, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker I will be saying more about the first-generation scholarship program um, with Monroe College. So, Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education, as I said, has received an additional $5,102, Mr. Speaker, for the following services and programs that I just mentioned. Mr. Speaker, with grants and contributions under the Ministry of Education, we provide grants to approximately 42 entities, local and regional, notwithstanding that the responsibility to pay um, subventions and dues to regional institutions is in the remit of the Ministry of External Affairs. And so the Ministry of Education, we are working with the CXC, and we're also working with the Caribbean Accreditation Authority for Education in Medicine and Other Health, professionals known as CAMHP. On the domestic front, Mr. Speaker, in relation to grants and contributions, Ministry of Education, the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College receives $18,290,164 from the government of St. Lucia. The National Skills Development Center, or NSDC, receives $2,887,291. And for facilities fees, Mr. Speaker, on the grants and contributions, the Ministry of Finance has made available to the Ministry of Education $2,358,500. And Mr. Speaker, I'm also happy to report to this Honorable House that the St. Lucia Cadet Corps, and although you will find that line item, Mr. Speaker, under the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, the legislation is clear, and the Ministry of Education has been having meetings with 
the Cadet Corps, and I'm happy to report that the Prime Minister, in his wisdom, Mr. Speaker, has given the Cadet Corps an additional $26,200 for programming this year. Mr. Speaker, we also have $46 million to spend, Mr. Speaker, as per the estimates. Early Childhood Development and Protection, $1.8 million. Major Repairs, Rehabilitation of Schools, Mr. Speaker, $14,195,000, Mr. Speaker. The Equip, which is funded by the Caribbean Development Bank, Education Quality Improvement Project, $3.1 million. Construction of a Block at Care, $109,000. Rehabilitation of NSDC Building, $357,000. The Human Capital Resilience Project funded by the World Bank, Mr. Speaker, in this year's estimates, you will notice there is a figure of $16,400,190. ICT integration, $2,117,541. TVET transformation project, $2.3 million. OECS Pearl, $1.3 million. And the PUT, Mr. Speaker, which is really a PUT acronym for Program for Education, Realignment, and Transformation, there is a sum of $900,000 to get the program going. And the PUT is really a continuation of several other programs that the Ministry of Education would have entered with the Caribbean Development Bank over the years. So we have heard of the BIP program. Now we now have EQUIP, Mr. Speaker, and the EQUIP will be succeeded by the PUT. Enhancing school security, that is, school security has been a challenge for the Ministry of Education. And so, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister and Minister for, Minister for Finance has allocated to the Ministry of Education $1.3 million to enhance school security. The OECS Skills and Innovation Project, $2.3 million. And so, Mr. Speaker, we are looking at a total of $46,644,700 for the programs that I just mentioned. Mr. Speaker, I will resist, in the interest of time, the temptation to speak in any elaborate way on some of the programs that I have mentioned. And so, Mr. Speaker, it is now time for me to turn my attention to the constituency of Denry North in terms of how $1.8 million under the various heads, billion, $1.8 billion, Mr. Speaker, I'm even more excited, and how that figure across agencies can impact the people of Denry North. And so, Mr. Speaker, I immediately draw your attention to Head 43, Department of Infrastructure, Ports, and Transport. Reconstruction and rehabilitation of roads, $2,001,000. Mr. Speaker, I expect our road issues in Denrinov to be addressed during this financial year. And Mr. Speaker, I have on many occasions before come to this chamber, and I have been able to lament the fact that for five years in opposition, Mr. Speaker, I was able to do absolutely nothing in my constituency because the Prime Minister at the time believed it was the right political strategy to employ to deny me, Mr. Speaker. And every time I speak about that, Mr. Speaker, I'm tempted to get emotional that the people of Denry North, Mr. Speaker, they had a right in this democracy to decide who they voting for. They had elected me for the first time in 2011. And based on my performance, Notwithstanding that on the national level they turned against the Central Social Labour Party, but in Denry North, Mr. Speaker, the people expressed their satisfaction with my level of representation and they went into the various polling stations and they elected me as their representative. And when I came in this chamber, Mr. Speaker, to debate budget and I saw figures in the estimates, Mr. Speaker, I had a legitimate expectation that I would have been able to execute projects on behalf of the people of Denry North. Not roads, Mr. Speaker, not school repairs, not CDP. Absolutely nothing was given to me. And today, Mr. Speaker, I have a deficit. And notwithstanding the fact that the Prime Minister has been very kind to Denry North in this term of government, Mr. Speaker, I am just dealing with the deficit even before I can begin to venture in new areas. So with an allocation for road reconstruction and rehabilitation of roads, of $2,001,000, Mr. Speaker, I expect a number of roads in Denry North to be addressed. But Mr. Speaker, it would be remiss of me 
to raise the expectations, rightly so, of my people without placing on the record my gratitude to the Prime Minister and the Minister for Infrastructure for the cemetery road which was constructed, which was rehabilitated um, roughly two or three months ago. Mr. Speaker, as we speak, the Austin Hill Road is under reconstruction, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are a few roads that we all have become familiar with in this chamber. The Austin Hill Road is one of them. The St. Mary Road is one of them, Mr. Speaker, and I don't know who knows where St. Mary Road is. I will leave that to the member for Mikunov. The Laboratory Road, the Katyn Road, and those are the roads, Mr. Speaker, we've heard about time and time again being spoken about right here in this chamber. And so today, as we speak, Mr. Speaker, the Austin Hill Road is being repaired, thanks to the St. Lucia Labour Party. But there's a history with the Austin Hill Road. Austin Hill. Mr. Speaker, when the Prime Minister was the Minister for Infrastructure, and we both were working in the cabinet of the member for Viewfort South, we did not have sufficient monies at the time to do the road in its entirety. So we decided that we were going to do the middle portion of the road where it was a bit steep and vehicles were having difficulty navigating that portion of the road. Banana farmers were cultivating up in Madigua and shop owners in Upper Austin Hill were having tremendous difficulty, Mr. Speaker, getting their goods and their supplies up that road. And so, with the little that was available, we did the middle portion of the road. The government changed, and so I had a natural expectation that the road had started and that the United Workers' Party government would have completed the road. Mr. Speaker, in applying the Belarus Doctrine, it was clear what they wanted to do. They wanted to leave the road in the state that they found it, hoping that the people of Denry North would have turned against me and that their candidate would have found favor with the electorate in that constituency and they would have gone on to win the election. Mr. Speaker, the era of the country, Buki, is no more. Our people are more enlightened today and they know that once the St. Lucia Labour Party is in government, Mr. Speaker, their road would have been fixed and true to form. Midway in this term of government, the Austin Hill Road is being repaired. So today, Mr. Speaker, Aiden and his family, they are happy people. Jupi is a happy man today. <laughs> T-Pop is happy today. Brother George, Bebe, Zatola, and even Matida, Mr. Speaker. Matida is happy because you know what? Matida, for the first time in a long time, will get a ride, and she's in her 80s, will get a ride on a road that is properly paved. And she will no longer suffer, Mr. Speaker, having to traverse a bad road because a wicked government decided that she too had to be punished because in the majority, they went to the polls to vote for Sean Edward and the St. Lucia Labour Party. But we're not just stopping, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> we're not just stopping, Mr. Speaker, on the main Austin Hill Road. But in Upper Austin Hill, you have a little enclave that we call Two Marys. And only Sunday, Mr. Speaker, we were there putting the base material, hoping that, Mr. Speaker, when the CDP allocation for the next quarter is unveiled, we will be able to put a concrete surface because that section was not part of the Ministry of Infrastructure project. So, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I am pleased with that allocation. The Alemon Road in Grand Riviere. I have had three attempts since I came into government or into politics trying to complete this road. Again, under the member for Viewfort South when he was Prime Minister, and I received my allocation, I was able to do phase one of the Alemon Road in Grand Riviere Denry. Mr. Speaker, during that same term, I attempted phase two. And true to form, the United Workers' Party came into office, and that was the end of the Alemon Road. We have been in government for two and a half years, and we have attempted, Mr. Speaker, to not just attempted, but we have completed phase three. With one phase left, the Prime Minister has assured me, Mr. Speaker, that in this financial year, he will do everything possible. And I see the member for Ancillary Canary is looking at me as if to suggest, subject to the availability of funds, that this particular route will be completed. But Mr. Speaker, we're not just waiting for the Ministry of Infrastructure to make that intervention. Because today, as we speak, there are three contractors 
doing drainage works on that road being funded by the constituency development program. So by the time the Ministry of Infrastructure is ready to move in, we would have taken care of the drainage, and all they have to do for us is to give us a surface to finish that road where Alemon connects to Ice Barber Shop in Mont Panache, Grand Rivier. Mr. Speaker, Lower Olio Combined School. Still on the head 43, infrastructure, line item recon re reconstruction and rehabilitation of roads. Mr. Speaker, Lower Olio Combined School. That road has been in a deplorable state for some time. And I must tell you, Mr. Speaker, the calls come ever so often from Mrs. Marcella Hobson, who happens to be a resident. And recently I had to tell her, Marcella, I was not given anything for five years, so you have to bear with me. But Mr. Speaker, you know what we've done just to provide immediate relief? We have been able to mobilize with the Ministry of Infrastructure to get the grader that is currently in canals. As soon as the grader is finished in canals, it will be up in Olion next to the school to provide immediate relief. And thereafter, we will look, Mr. Speaker, to pave the road um, lower the Olion Combined School. So that Mrs. Hobson will be a happy lady. Yvonne, who lives in that area, will be a happy lady. And Alfia, Mr. Speaker, Obi's mom, who's originally from Grand Rivier, she too will have a good road to traverse. And they would, Mr. Speaker, once and for all, say goodbye to the deplorable conditions that they've had to put up with. Mr. Speaker, I'm D that when two quarter up where a budget is done, there are $2 million Et ça va tout la hand qui dépasser le chemin. Mais ça l'agence a regardé nous gouvernement Kenya programme que vous avez en chemin. Et moi je fait point en plus bonnet. Comme Mr Speaker, les me taper électé par Jean de Nuinoff. Moi t'ai ni en la foi dat me kay ça fait chemin en constituency moi. Même si en élection 2016, les parti perd élection. Mais moi gagne élection en de Nuinoff. Et je me disais que si je suis venu ici à le Parlement et le gouvernement a mis l'argent pour faire un projet, je me suis dit que je suis tout le monde. Et qui est ce monde qui est bon en ce veille qui a été bien, Mr. Speaker, qui est comme ça ici pour vous Mais même le Parlement pour Microsoft, là, c'était le Premier ministre. Il prend en position, qui est ce l'autre Premier ministre cette ici Je ne sais pas. Dans le dépit, vous êtes en même opposition. Même si vous avez une citoyenne élection, il va y avoir une pièce qui a été assistée par Chimé. Par EP Health Center, par l'école, rien que ça fait un projet en communauté. Et que ça pour qu'ils aient fait ça, Mr. Speaker? Parce que ce qui est par là, c'est que les gens qui sont constitués, qui sont tournés contre tout, avec l'élection, ils vont voter par les EP candidats. Mr. Speaker, ils ne sont pas couillés encore. Je ne sais pas, les gens qui sont en gouvernement, et puis Sean Edward de Parlement, ils vont jouer plus de choses, puis ils ne vont jamais jouer en bas gouvernement flambeau. And that is why I am happy. So, Jodia, quand nous avons parlé, Mr. Speaker, she met a lemon Austin Katape Fet. Et que vous depuis Madigua, vous avez mené pour y aller Metro. Et que vous avez dit que déjà fait un choc. Là, nous sommes en gouvernement um, en l'année 2011 et puis 2016. Mr. Speaker, a lemon Grand Rivière, je dis que vous avez mené Fet l'année ça, que nous avons pris un lemon et nous avons mené un lemon panache pour le barbershop ice. Nous avons aussi fait chimé um, pour l'école d'Espin. And Mr. Speaker, the stretch of road at La Ressource that most persons refer, person refer to as the Mambro stretch. This long stretch of road off the Richmond Highway, which takes you into La Ressource, flanked by bananas on either side. Mr. Speaker, this is the most patched road in St. Lucia. I can no longer accept patches. Don't talk about Vigier Road there. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister and I have had a discussion about this road. I have spoken to the Minister for Infrastructure about this road. And the plan is we are going to widen this particular stretch of road by one meter in the direction of the mango trees that served at one time as a windbreak for the bananas that were cultivated in that valley. Drains will be concreted from the car wash all the way to the lapel intersection, Mr. Speaker. And I'm hoping that at the end of it, we will get a brand new Baba Green surface. Baba Green as thick as what is on the Venus Road in the ancillary Cadre's <laughs> constituency. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Rich for Ring Road. Anselma Levi Johnson, Lynette. 
Pastor Alfred, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am inundated with phone calls and requests. Mr. Speaker, the road has been in a deplorable condition for a long time. And this is one of the routes I was hoping I would have been able to do, Mr. Speaker, between 2016 and 2021. But as I have indicated before, I was given absolutely no assistance. And so, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> so, Mr. Speaker that road is still in a deplorable state. Mr. Speaker, let me draw your attention, and there's so many other routes, Barflora Road, Twafwe Road, and a number of routes which I will probably revisit when I speak to um, the allocation on the, the, the Constituency Development Program. Mr. Speaker, Head 41, Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development. A budget plan is a new and line item you can banana management unit. A unit that has been a people with million dollars to guard as a fair administration fig. Mr. Speaker, ces femmes ja répond nous les nous dit aller planter plus fig. Mais une situation nous ni et fig right now la panier win fresh encore. Et nous tout savent qui ça qui veut win fresh et que ba qui moun win fresh disparaît. Gouvernement qui était là, gouvernement flambeau en cause win fresh pour des disparaît. Mr. Speaker, I know that my farmers still continue to toil on the banana fields. And every single opportunity that Laura gets, and Paulie gets, and the other farmers get, Mr. Speaker, they continue to, to, to explain to me some of the challenges that they are having as it relates to marketing. But I'm extremely confident, Mr. Speaker, that given some of the measures that will be disclosed in the policy debate, that our banana farmers will begin to see light in their business, Mr. Speaker, once again. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Head 46. The line item, Community Tourism. An allocation of $3.3 million. Mr. Speaker, this is welcome news for the people of Denry North. We in the Denry Basin, Mr. Speaker, are beginning to benefit directly from the tourism pie. And only recently, Mr. Speaker, I had discussions with two young constituents who expressed interest in setting up an ATV tour in the Mabuya Valley. And today, Mr. Speaker, without putting out their business or giving them a free advertising plug, I can tell you that they are at a very advanced stage, working very closely with the Ministry of Tourism. So, Brendan, most persons know as Ampa, and Elias Ford, Mr. Speaker, are two of the individuals who would have expressed interest. But there's so much more that we can get from community tourism, but in the interest of time, Mr. Speaker, I will confine my comments and contribution to Head 46 to the fact that I'm extremely pleased that young persons from the Mabuya Valley are benefiting directly from that particular tourism allocation. Mr. Speaker, Head 47, Department of Physical Development and Urban Renewal. Land Administration, $7.5 million. Mr. Speaker, Land Administration, and I should also tie that with line item, Mr. Speaker, proud, for which $3 million um, has been allocated. Mr. Speaker, Olio is one of the most affected communities in this entire country as it relates to land rationalization and land administration. Olio has some of the most expensive houses on the east coast of St. Lucia. But the people do not have title to the land. And homes constructed to the tune of half a million dollars, Mr. Speaker, cannot be used as collateral. They can't go to the bank, Mr. Speaker, to borrow to send their children to school. And I have a particular constituent who has been at me, and justifiably so, Mr. Wilfred Wells, who most persons know as Manton. He has a very impressive structure, Mr. Speaker, probably costing or worth more than a, mil <coughs> more than a million dollars, but he does not have title to the land. And, and the sooner, Mr. Speaker, the sooner we can rationalize the land situation in Olio to give people title, the better. Mr. Speaker, during this financial year, I intend on working very closely with personnel from the Department of Physical Development and Urban Renewal, and more specifically, Mr. Speaker, personnel from Proud, 
that will be statutorized to ensure that the people of Olio get the, the relief that they so um, richly deserve. Mr. Speaker, let us turn our attention to Head 21, Office of the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I am extremely pleased to see the distress fund as a line item. $1.6 million. I remember during my first term in government, Mr. Speaker, there's a gentleman in Belmont, or who lives in Belmont by the name of Shat, William O'Culley. It was a Saturday morning when Shat, a name that has evoked a smile from the member of Euford North, Shat left his home in Belmont and he went to the garden. He left three or four of his grandchildren at home, Mr. Speaker. And at about 11 o'clock, he got a phone call that his house was on fire. By the time he made it from the garden in Upper Danavia to Belmont, the house was completely destroyed. And Mr. Speaker, when I approached him, he was inconsolable. And it's not often that you see a big man from Denry North crying, Mr. Speaker. But there are some parts of this country where you see them crying on demand. But Shad had a legitimate reason to be crying on that Saturday morning. I approached the then Prime Minister, knowing that there was a distress fund. And all he said to me, Mr. Speaker, was that I needed to come with a fire report to justify that there was a fire and an assessment um, from the fire department. And in very quick time, a check of $20,000 was issued, Mr. Speaker, to Shat, and shortly thereafter, he was able to be back on the a roof with his grandchildren, thanks to the work of the St. Lucia Labour Party. But what happened when the government changed? As a line item in the budget, the distress fund disappeared. Mr. Speaker, keep the money, Queer. Lani Abai, we wear a budget like a queer distress fund. A distress fund, a two company kisa more power distress ye, say moun ki a twaka e ki a difficulty. A twaka sma e be difficulty as a veni nipot mania. It's a accident, it's a defeat. A premier minister to passe, mam parlement pour vie fort, it a mette a budget la lenute a gouvernement de denye kou, sa ka queer distress fund. A ka norma constituency man chat ka wete bel mot, tout moun konet li. Kali tape brile. Et puis nous avons un papier, hors département du fait, pour dire oui, la tenir du fait, et puis comme les choses sont en paix, nous avons un chèque balé et qui est bâti Kylie encore. And throughout the length and breadth of this country, Mr. Speaker, listen to the news, Mr. Speaker. There is always a little situation where somebody's little structure has gone up in flames. Sometimes they are at work at the hotel, sometimes they are in church, sometimes they are down the road. And in quick time, Mr. Speaker, the plywood or, 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 or the board, the mahogany, would go up in flames. And these people have no insurance, Mr. Speaker. What do you say to them? What did the former administration do? Mr. Speaker, they said we were encouraging a culture of mendicants by programming for these people. So today, when I see the distress fund being reinstated in the manner that the Prime Minister and Member for Castries is has reintroduced it. Mr. Speaker, I feel that I'm a, I am an empowered parliamentary rep because Kerry Abbott from Daniel Riviere, better known as Ribina, he had a house. Yes, we have, a, we have some very expensive names in Denry North. And not only do we have names, we can, we can christen people too, so you have to be careful. And his house, Mr. Speaker, was destroyed by fire. Mr. Speaker, as we speak today, a check belonging to the government, uh, the accountant general, has been written so that Ribina Kerry Abbott can be compensated. And early next week, Mr. Speaker, he will receive his check for an amount that I don't wish to disclose right now. <laughs> I hope he doesn't use it to drink Ribina. <laughs> but that is what we're about, Mr. Speaker. A government that can create an enabling environment for billionaires to come in and invest. And Mr. Speaker, by the same token, we can meet every solution at their level, understanding that they have a role in the society. Mr. Speaker, not only fire, Ava Joseph of Denier Riviere, she migrated to the Virgin Islands to work in the hospitality industry. And she just kept on saving her money, saving her money, saving her money. 
This is because she was able to build a house in Denny Rivier. Lo and behold, it was close to the river, river bank. And Mr. Speaker, we had a landslide that has threatened to compromise the young lady's structure. The Ministry of Infrastructure has made the assessment, but it is taking a while for that to be addressed. It is my intention, Mr. Speaker, as early as Tuesday of next week, given that Monday is a holiday, for me to write to the Prime Minister to see what form of compensation she can get or support she can get under the distress fund. And I believe it is a legitimate request, Mr. Speaker, having examined the Mr. Speaker, I, I noticed the member for Miku North is beginning to chuckle. Um, I have not requested a jetty, and I don't know what he's nervous about. But Mr. Speaker, I will formally write to the Prime Minister to see if she can be assisted on the, the distress fund. Mr. Speaker, perhaps the most exciting of all the heads of expenditure in this year's estimates for the people of Denrinov, the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs. And there is a line item, Mr. Speaker, Larissa's Health Centre Reconstruction Project. That's right. And as I peruse the estimates, the technocrats in the Ministry of Finance working with the Minister for Finance and the Minister in the Ministry of Finance are saying that it will cost the government of St. Lucia $1.1 million to completely reinstate the Larry Seuss Health Center. Mr. Speaker, today, the 27th of March 2024, and according to your watch, at 12 minutes to 4 o'clock, there are workmen at the Larry Seuss Health Center reinstating the Larry Seuss Health Center. But there's a story to be told about the Larry Seuss Health Center. Mr. Speaker, no, they're not working half day today. <laughs> they're working the entire day. That's right. The Larry Health Center was destroyed by fire, Mr. Speaker, or damaged by fire in 2014. The St. Lucia Labour Party was in government. Mr. Speaker, I approached the then Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. And in the estimates of 2015, Mr. Speaker, there was a line item in the budget for the reinstatement of the Larry Seuss Health Center. But because the elections came and the St. Lucia Labour Party had to leave office, Mr. Speaker, the member for Mikud South, he took the allocation out of the budget. Completely, he didn't say, well, okay, we will look at it the following year. For five years, I can quit Gavin, but all right. For five years, Mr. Speaker, he did not see the need after he had taken it out in the first year to reinstate the amount for the Larry Seuss Health Center. Mr. Speaker, today, the Larry Seuss Health Center is being reconstructed. But I will say more about the Larry Seuss Health Center in terms of the services that will be provided. Lady Fay Detri Health Center Larry Seuss, Government Labor, Tear Power. Ministre de responsabilité pour finance et que c'était premier ministre même parlement pour vieux fort. Il mettait l'argent en dit dans budget là pour nous abattre health center à vie parce que ça c'est health center qui a un bail service pour mon au lion d'espine garder la ressource l'appel de rivière Belmont et Jig Jaguar vinn qui vinn là tout. Par ça qui ça qui fait monsieur speaker. Puis le parti ba gagne élection. Le premier ministre là vini premier ministre qui dit l'inside leader flambeau. Il tire l'argent au budget là, à quoi pour dire, je donne une offre, pas vous dire ça, parce que je joue l'élection, je vais aller et je vais voter pour le Seigneur Libre Parti. Mais, Mr. Speaker, I hope, I hope those of us who are aspiring to continue in the politics and to contest elections are learning from that. Mr. Speaker, there is only one form of compensation for political wickedness. You will lose. You will lose. And those who are following bad company, Mr. Speaker, and I will come to that in a while, because there's one on the other side who can't seem to understand that she did not win the seat in Denry North. And I have no difficulty with she referring to Denry North, with her um, referring to Denry North as her constituency, you know, Mr. Speaker. That is the place of her birth. But in terms of who has legitimacy to come and stand in this chamber and speak on behalf of the people, Mr. Speaker, that is my responsibility. That's right. I did not give it to myself. It was the people of Denry North in the majority who have on three occasions decided that they want me to come and speak on their behalf. So when you see aspiring politicians following bad company and they've been given a political lifeline by putting them in the Senate, 
and they cannot tell the people of Denver enough what it is that they can do for them. And instead, they want to engage in conversations about ministers' account. Mr. Speaker, we will account for the time before my 60 minutes or my time on, on my feet um, is up. So, Mr. Speaker, as I said, work is ongoing. We will, as I've been told by the Minister for Health and his team, see a full reinstatement of the Larissa's Health Centre in this um, calendar year 2024 with additional services, dental services. So, c'est pas qu'on entend si a moun a den rinor for a valia te ni a mal dan. Ou ni pou pou yon raid pou alen a gap la. Ou ni pou pou yon bus a le haywe ya. Ek le meyo a te a le haywe ya on pou ma chay l'hôpital den rin pou si yon sa gade dan ou ba. We are having dental services at the Larry Sous Health Center. And there are so many other services, but we will talk about those at some other time. So no longer will I see elderly people from Gadet and Olio and Despin standing by the highway in the hot sun waiting for a shuttle. Mr. Speaker, the catchment area for the Larissa's Health Center is such that the people can move from their homes to the facility without much hassle. Mr. Speaker, I want to turn my attention or your attention to Head 48, Ministry of Housing and Local Government. The National Housing Assistance Program, $2.1 million. Mr. Speaker, I will not tell this honorable chamber how many houses we've built, how many we have repaired. Experience has taught me that much. What I will say instead, Mr. Speaker, is Member that... For yes, you have 15 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what I will say is that we have assisted a number of families. And Mr. Speaker, you have to see on social media, as I've attempted to communicate to the national population, the deplorable condition in which people live in this country. And when I reflect, Mr. Speaker, that not too long ago in this country, people were living it in such squalid and deplorable conditions. And in a country like this, you had $112 million being spent on horses. Exactly. On horses? How can that be right, Mr. Speaker? Where is the conscience that goes with that? But Mr. Speaker, we will continue to work in the interests of our people. And very recently, Mr. Speaker, a name that has resonated um, in this chamber before, Joseph Kelly, better known as Vaz. He, Mr. Speaker, lived in conditions that were not the best. And we took a decision at the level of the Constituency Council and asked parliamentary rep, and we decided that we were making an intervention in his life. And today, Mr. Speaker, I may not have had as many constructed as my friend from the South, uh, the, and my comments about, about, about those, I'd rather leave for the cabinet room. But what I can tell you is that in Joseph Kelly's house, Mr. Speaker, we have shown the rest of the constituency and by extension some solutions what our government is about. That is how you empower people, Mr. Speaker. That is how you exhibit and you express care. That is how you show compassion to people. And again, Mr. Speaker, this is what we mean when we say we are putting people first. So, Kai Vazla ha bien fait. A Kai Nef, ya a bien petit we. Ek Vazla ka basse, Mr. Speaker, le après midi, ya ba balcon, ka bwetri justly. Because he ko fan dat la niya gomen. Sa se an nom, ou sa se ka fe, pou, 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 pou le tay, Mr. Speaker? An fon si yeye, yi ka tiri moun le yo mo. Ek le flambo an tou yon gouvernman. And I don't know how people attempt to defend that. When they came into government, they fire a burial assistant. But a lot of those who were advocating to bury him, he buried some of them, literally. But that's what we're about, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the number of families and people who have gotten assistance from the office of the parliamentary rep in Denry North, profile them, Mr. Speaker, you will see an almost equal number of United Workers Party supporters as Labour Party supporters. Look at the children from Denry North who are going to university on scholarships, Mr. Speaker. United Workers Party families are benefiting because we understand that education is not something you should use in any discriminatory way. So that when I empower a child who is from a United Workers Party household, Mr. Speaker, 
I am empowering somebody who will one day rise to a leadership position to make the valley and by extension St. Lucia a better place. But no, Mr. Speaker, on the other side, it is always a politics of cut through. Mr. Speaker, Department of Youth, Economy and Economic Development, CDP, $22 million. Mr. Speaker, I sat here. What is that? But the cast is a chesla, comam, vieux, car assise, pour le moment. Le moteur opposition. Et puis, ça sera moi assise là pour sec l'année. Et tous les l'année, oui, n'a dit encore, parce que vous avez un sous tout est. Mr. Speaker, pour sec l'année, moi assise là. Et mes gardes, yo, car c'est pas où est projet, car venir bosse, car faire présentation en les PowerPoint pour dire qui ça y a joué, qui ça y a fait, et puis l'argent. Et tous les années, je vais dire que l'année ça n'est pas nous parce que l'élection doit se passer, l'année prochaine, nous allons jouer. Dès que je viens l'année prochaine, je vais plus décomporter. Troisième année, rien. Quatrième année, je vais dire que l'élection est venue, nous allons jouer, 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 et que nous avons passé avec Simon, Mr. Speaker. Payons avec Simon. Je les ai achetés. Payons avec T111 Play. Je les ai achetés. Parce qu'ils ne me donnent pas. Et nous rigolons. Ce n'est pas un joke. Les gens de Denry North ne devraient pas être faits pour souffrir parce qu'ils ont voté pour moi. C'est leur droit. Et les gens viennent ici, Mr. Speaker, et posturent. Et font que ce soit comme s'ils ont toutes les solutions et les idées. Et ceux qui ont dénoncé, qui ont dit qu'ils ne sont pas comme les leaders, Let their voice be heard, Mr. Speaker, in denouncing that wrong. But I'm happy when I know that this Prime Minister from Castries East ensures that there is equity in the distribution of state resources. So that the people of Montsio in Choiselle, the people of Diga and Lacoville in Mikusau, they can have legitimate expectations that their rep will deliver for them because we are the government in office today as was the case when the St. Lucia Labour Party was in government between 2011 and 2016. Mr. Speaker, the department, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports had 54. Mr. Speaker, we have said time and again that we are committed to Member upgrading... Member enough, you have 10 minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are committed to upgrading sporting infrastructure in this country. And recently, Mr. Speaker, as a government, we guaranteed a loan to the national, for the National Lottery's Authority to embark on sporting infrastructure upgrade. And naturally, Mr. Speaker, whatever is debated in the, upper, in the lower house is also usually debated in the lower house. And I could not help, Mr. Speaker, but follow the debate in the upper house, where the loan guarantee for the National Lottery's Authority was being discussed, and a political misfit, Mr. Speaker, decided to join the debate. Consistent with her utterances in the parliament and elsewhere, Mr. Speaker, you should have heard the diatribe. You should have heard, Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the classlessness that came out of the presentation. No substance. And at a time when you're supposed to come and tell people how much of an alternative you can be to Sean Edward, you want to talk about minister's account because you are a puppet. And people who went down that same road, they suffered the consequences. But you have become a mouthpiece, Mr. Speaker, where you're not even in charge of your own political faculties, but you're going to come here and talk. And she has no shame because she wants to come and present documents to the parliament to make it seem, Mr. Speaker, as if I had done something untoward and I was a crook. But let me tell you what happened. When I went into the Ministry of Education, during the first week, I asked the senior personnel, PS and DPS, to give me a status report on work currently happening in schools. And we went into the field and I have my report. So I went to the Richford Combined School. Let me see who the contractors are. And there's a column for comments Contractors recommended by FERA. Yes. So I asked, who's FERA? Yes. I am the parliamentary rep, but FERA is. Re and Mr. Speaker, I'm not, this is not something I'm making up, you know. Yes, I know you would have. Contractors recommended by FERA. You've never won an election. 
you never minister, but you're recommending contractors on behalf of the Ministry of Education. Mr. Speaker, Valto Building Supplies Limited. After we came into government, I went into the CDP office and they've given me a long list of materials procured. Genuine North Constituency Development um, CDP account. And I've told you before, I never saw a dollar of CDP. But here was the individual who wants to paint me as what I'm not. Where did she get the authority? Where did she get the authority? But that's what you do. When your own candidacy is under threat, and there's nothing more disconcerting than when people can eyeball you and tell you they no longer want you. They're not voting for you. You have no political relevance. You're Pavlo. And you believe the best thing to do is to try and take me on. Gone onto a platform in Mac and wanted to associate the death of an elderly man to our election victory. And Mr. Speaker, I just, as I would have done in my cricket days, I picked up the line and I allowed that to go by into the keeper's gloves. But that should never be interpreted to mean that I'm weak or I cannot respond. I know my brand. The people of Denmark know me. And if you want to engage in constructive debate with me about taking the valley forward, if you want to challenge the fact that we have never had more young people from Denrinov attending university and grabbing higher educational opportunities than today, let us have a conversation. But you want to talk about man's death? You want to come and enter conversation about minister's account? Mr. Speaker, I know who I am, you know. The people of Denrinov know who I am. And I have said time and again, all you have to do, after a Bajan lawyer was paid more than a quarter million dollars to investigate me, Mr. Speaker, the day they can come and show one dollar that cannot be accounted for, and one dollar that was not spent in conformity with the National Lodges Authority Act, which states it must be spent on youth development and sports, come and get me. You know what we did? I was tired seeing children putting their nails in the dirt at track meets, Mr. Speaker, and we bought track shoes for them. Yes. Makiba Alcid cannot be yes. vying for qualification at the Rio Olympics. Yes. And while she's in America, Mr. Speaker, yes, the landlord is chasing her for rent money. How can she focus? I caused the lotteries to pay the rent for her. Mm -hmm. And when Julian left Hess and went to St. Catherine High in Jamaica, yes, we caused it to happen. And when Laverne Spencer in Helsinki, Norway, doesn't have the support personnel that Shanti Lo and the other Americans had, we caused it to happen. Right. And for that, I'm supposed to feel sorry? You proud, my brother. I'm supposed to. Tell them, challenge me. Challenge me on the work that I've done. But you know what it is? That has their style. Go after my character. Yeah. They can never debate me on performance as a politician, as a rep, or as a minister. Never. They Remember, cannot you do it. But they can. you have so, five minutes left. How many? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So when people who have no political relevance I know what is sad about it when this has been done. Mr. Speaker, the women of this country have come from too far. There are too many women in leadership position. That match, forward match by the women of our country is too real, too potent, and too profound to have despots like that coming and trying to bring on the average. Go in your section and get out of it. This is not for you. Yeah, preach. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, but there will be time to deal with that. And let me say here today, do not interpret my silence or me not wanting to respond to certain things as being weak. I'm not weak. I'm weak I am proud of the work I did in the Ministry of Sports. I am proud. So don't come with Minister's account foolishness. Mr. Speaker, coincidentally, we will be hosting the Jean Pierre Netball competition in a couple of days. Mr. Speaker, when I was the Minister for Youth Development and Sports, we hosted Jean Pierre and I slapped the letter. Who signed the letter to, see, to Lottery's authority to pave the VG Sports Complex? It wasn't me. It wasn't me. And tell them, any day they can come with a check with my signature from National Lotteries, I'm going to resign the following day. Any time they can come with one contract issued by the Lotteries Authority where my signature is on it, I'm going to leave the following day foolishness. They have nothing to talk about. Devoid of substance. Politically lost. And the easy thing to do is let's target this one and target this one. Don't come for me. Don't come for me. I can take them on, Mr. Speaker. But you know what? I have to keep my cool. My work in Denrinov is not done yet. I have a lot to do for this country and for Denrinov. 
I have 26,000 school children interested in my care. And every day I wake up, Mr. Speaker, I ask myself, will this action of yours, what reaction will it trigger from the children of this country? Mr. Speaker, I support the estimates as presented by the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, ours is a working government. Mr. Speaker, ours is a government that puts people first. And let me say in this chamber <laughs> that it is incumbent on us to protect the victory. There's nothing they hate more than hearing us say we're protecting the victory. We have to protect the victory. We are protecting the victory to ensure that they will not pull the laptop program from our children. We are protecting the victory because we do not want monies to be spent on horses while hospitals are being neglected. We are protecting the victory because people will not be paying for ambulance fees, paying ambulance fees anymore. That is why we are protecting the victory. So when they come, Mr. Speaker, no idea, same old day couché, and, and coming with all kind of tricks, hollow tricks. Go and play with dogs. What are they tick? Can my hair paint show about she me? Beaties. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the people of the Enrinov, I support the estimates. Yes, sir. I rest my case. Yes, sir. 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 The member for Soufre for Sejac. Well, I don't know what it is. Why are you guys this? You have. So tell me um, half an hour so I can switch. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand in support of the estimate of revenue and expenditure for 2023-2024 in the amount of 1,894,100,000. $800 as presented by the Minister for Finance, which is which we are now discussing and debating. That's what I said. $110,800 as presented by the Honorable Member. First of all, Mr. Speaker, let me give thanks to the Almighty for His grace and mercy. I want to thank this afternoon my constituent, the Sufre Fosheshak, for their confidence and for their support. Mr. Speaker, I want to place on record my thank you to the Honorable Prime Minister and to my cabinet colleagues for their continued support and for our focus on committing to improving the lives of the people of St. Lucia. I think, Mr. Speaker, when I decided to be a candidate for the St. Lucia Labour Party, that decision was critical for me. The purpose of the team. And the purpose, Mr. Speaker, from Dr. Anthony to now the member for Castries East, is the focus of improving the lives of the people of St. Lucia. And for me, this is the singular purpose for being in politics, to serve the people and to improve the lives of the people of St. Lucia. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, 
I want to place on record my gratitude to my permanent secretary, the staff of the Ministry of Commerce, the CEOs of the allied agencies that fall under my ministry, which are Export St. Lucia, St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, the Free Zone, and their respective staff members, Mr. Speaker. I also want to thank the various private sector bodies um, that I work with, and they are the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, the St. Lucia Manufacturers Association, the St. Lucia Small Business Association, the Vendors Association, the Fashion Council, and the National Consumers Association. I also want to place on record my thanks to my constituents, and especially, Mr. Speaker, the men and women of the Sufre Police Station, the men and women of the Sufre Fire Service, the doctors, nurses, and staff of the Sufre Hospital, the Etangs and Fonchenjac Health Centers, the teachers at our various schools, secondary, primary, infant, and preschoolers, the executive and members of the Sufre Constituency Group, the staff, the, the chairman, board members, and staff of the Sufra Regional Development Foundation, the mayor, council, and staff of the Sufra Constituency Council, the management and staff of the Piton Management Area, the management and staff of the Sufra Marine Management Association, the business community in Sufra, especially our hoteliers for their support in community development, youth and sports, especially in Chasne, Jane Mountain. So Mr. Speaker, back to the business at hand. Once again, Mr. Speaker, I come before you, indeed before the citizens of our beloved country and my constituents of Sufre Fosheshak as we seek to comply with our obligation to lay the estimates of expenditure and revenue for the coming fiscal year 2024-2025. Most importantly, Mr. Speaker, I come to account for my stewardship over the resources that has been entrusted to me and my ministry, and also as a parliamentary rep for Sufre for Sheshat. I also want to speak on the previous financial year 2023 as well as to present a synopsis of the projects and initiatives which will comprise the work program for my ministry and constituent over the new financial year 2024-2025. In this regard, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to note that the Minister of Commerce at page 233 and 234 of these estimates was assigned some $17,240,000 to implement its work program over the fiscal year. Of this amount, 12,688,000 has been provided to fund recurring expenditure relating to the operations as well as project related recurrent activities. This includes an additional $1,640,200 to manage the implementation of five projects being undertaken by the Ministry, of which I will elaborate on subsequently. Mr. Speaker, with respect to the capital expenditure, some $4,552,000, and that is appearing on pages 233 and 234 of the project, of the estimates, has been programmed for this financial year, for four projects, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I think I want to put this in the context of the mission of my ministry. And that mission is, Mr. Speaker, to actively promote and facilitate, together with the private sector, the establishment of a dynamic business environment, which anticipates changes in global circumstances, while strengthening and enhancing the productive capacity and competitiveness of industry and commerce engaging good business practices and consumer interests. 
You may recall, Mr. Speaker, that in 2023, global inflation allowed a downward trajectory was still above pre-COVID levels. And at that point, inflation was at 6.3%, Mr. Speaker. So all the information that we have now and the figures that we have, I want us to put this into context. Mr. Speaker, under the head 031, Enterprise Development, Mr. Speaker, and we speak there on our small enterprise development unit, we've been assigned 6,182,747 dollars, Mr. Speaker. Of which 3,750,462 Dollars, which is project code 0394, has been programmed from, for our MSME loan grant facility under the management of SEDU, which is charged with providing support and business facilitation services to our MSMEs. Mr. Speaker, our MSME program, which is a flagship program for the ministry, we will discuss in a lot more detail during the second part on the policy statement, Mr. Speaker. But I want to note that so far, based on the figures that we've received, we have received 514 applications, Mr. Speaker, under the MSME Loan Grant Program. And I must take a moment to give a breakdown of application by constituency. And I think that is important. It's important because, Mr. Speaker, the second calling for this MSME loan program uh, will be the 2nd of April this year. So I really want members to listen to the numbers and to see what work you have to do on the ground to ensure that your members do benefit from that program. So leading the way is Grosile with 99 applications. Sufre 61. <laughs> Sufre 61, Mr. Speaker. And then we go on to Ansari Canaries 20, Babono 32, Castries Central 14, Castries East 31, Castries South 33, Castries South East 39, Swazel 27. Denry North, 19. Denry South, 7. Labry, 15. Miku North, 20. Miku South, 12. Viewfort North, 24. And Viewfort South, 16, Mr. Speaker. And the applications by sector, Mr. Speaker. Agriculture, 61. Agro Processing 39, Agro Tourism 10, Beauty and Wellness 51, Creative Industries 50, ICT 13, Manufacturing 71, Professional Services 81, Restaurants 25, and we have miscellaneous of 112. So, Mr. Speaker, from the First tranche, we have disbursed $3.296 million, Mr. Speaker, and 204 applicants have actually received those monies, Mr. Speaker. I am saying this again, Mr. Speaker. I know that there are quite a few persons who have applied and have not received, and I'm telling them that we are in the process of ensuring that we communicate with each person so that if for some reason the application was denied, we can work with them to see whether they get into the second calling. Mr. Speaker, within the program, I want to speak on some of the other programs within our ministry, Mr. Speaker. On the code 0325, and that is page 236, 
we received some $156,640 for our Small Business Development Center Young Entrepreneurs in Action, our YAY program. Mr. Speaker, when we compare this amount to what we received last year, last year we received $65,200, which is an increase of 131%, Mr. Speaker. Last year, we were able to have 40 students under this program, Mr. Speaker. So with this increase, we are hoping to increase the number of persons participating to 100 with this coming year. Mr. Speaker, on the commerce and industry, some of the other programs that we have here, we have what you call our Love St. Lucia campaign, and on the so thank you project code 0452 page 236 mr speaker we received some ec eighty thousand dollars to assist us in that campaign mr speaker uh, mr speaker this particular project is extremely important for us because what it does it is focus on trying to get st lucians to buy local mr speaker and when we see what is happening in the world as it relates to trade, it is extremely important that we raise the consciousness of our people that they support our local entrepreneurs, Mr. Speaker. So this program, although it only has received $80,000, we really want to stretch that program and to raise the consciousness of St. Lucians that we need to support local. It is only when we support our local entrepreneurs that this economy is going to grow. Mr. Speaker, another aspect of commerce and industry um, that we have, and that is on project code 0395, where we have received EC $136,098 is our digital enhancement program, Mr. Speaker. Um, this program is a three-year program, and we are in year three of the program, Mr. Speaker. But it is a program, again, that is extremely important to us. Because as commerce changes, we need to ensure that our small business persons embrace the di digital technology, that we embrace e-commerce, Mr. Speaker. Because with e-commerce, the world becomes the marketplace. And we are doing quite a bit, and I want to take this moment there to thank the Embassy of China, Taiwan, for the significant support that they presented to the ministry in terms of trying to work with our small business persons to ensure that they embrace technology. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, on the Department of Consumer Affairs, and that is uh, on page 245, I am pleased that we have received an increase for our National Consumers Association, Mr. Speaker. Um, for the past 13 years, they've received an annual subvention of $25,000. And this year, I want to thank the Minister for Finance for increasing this amount to $65,000, Mr. Speaker. Um, the adverse effect of worldwide inflation on consumers are evident in the escalating cost of vital commodities, including food, transport, and utilities. And in light of this, there is significant work to be done, both by the Consumer Affairs Department in my ministry and by the National Consumers Association, so that we can engage the consumers, talk about inflation, and what it is that we can do differently to stretch our dollar, Mr. Speaker. So I want to take this moment to thank the National Consumers Association for some of the um, appearances that they've made on television. Uh, they've actually got into a program, there's a talk show where they come in and provide explanation to the people. So I want to thank them, Mr. Speaker. So I move now, Mr. Speaker, to our government supply warehouse. And Mr. Speaker, on page 235, project code 0535, there is an allocation of $1 million, Mr. Speaker. 
And this million dollars, Mr. Speaker, is an effort to um, get a new location for the government warehouse, Mr. Speaker. The current um, location, there are significant challenges with the current location um, in terms of size, in terms of protection of the products that we have. So we are really trying to see whether we can move on to the valley, um, where we can get a larger place, where, because we're having challenges, Mr. Speaker, in terms of um, our suppliers getting off 20-foot um, containers to 40-foot containers. So it is in the interest of the public that we get the largest place, that we can do a lot more stocking of the items that we have and protect it. So that is the purpose of this, Mr. Speaker. And while we speak on that, Mr. Speaker, I know later on in the policy debate, we will have a lot of conversation in terms of availability of rice, flour, and sugar. But I want to put on our record that this government, for 2023-24, Mr. Speaker, subsidized those basic commodities to the tune of $11.5 million, Mr. Speaker. That is important, $11.5 million. That's the subsidy for rice, flour, and sugar by this government. So I want this to be placed on record, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, on the Division 032, Mr. Speaker, on page 238, you will also see there is an amount of $75,000 there. And the purpose of this amount, Mr. Speaker, is to see, explore whether statutorization of the warehouse is a viable option for us as a government. So that is the $75,000 provision there, so we can get a consultant and do the work that is required to come up with a solution for the warehouse. Mr. Speaker, on page 245, Division 090, there is a provision for $150,000, Mr. Speaker, and the purpose of this amount is for a southern extension of the Ministry of Commerce, Mr. Speaker. We made a commitment to the business people in Beaufort that we will be opening an office, and I am... Um, grateful that we now have a provision here for $150,000. We have identified a place and we are working with the Ministry of the Public Service, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that the Ministry of Commerce has a presence in Beaufort Town. Mr. Speaker, I move to the Department of Cooperatives and Mr. Speaker, under the Department of Cooperatives, I am pleased that we have a provision on the head 0454 for $275,000, Mr. Speaker. But first let me report on what, how, how we use the monies that we had for 2023-2024, Mr. Speaker. For 23-24, Mr. Speaker, our non-financial cooperatives made strides and with the monies we received, we were able to assist three cooperatives, Mr. Speaker, and they were Ansari, Soufre, and Denry Fisherman Cooperatives, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and we assisted with the installation of energy efficient equipment, air conditioning units, um, and also, for example, Soufre received an ice machine, Mr. Speaker. So now we have received another $275,000, Mr. Speaker, and I believe we have four cooperatives uh, who are going to benefit from this um, particular tranche, Mr. Speaker. Mr. The, the, the member for Beaufort South wants to know which four, Mr. Speaker. So let me see if I can. Yeah? 
the um, yeah, the number the um, we are going to deal with solarization of Fisher cooperatives. Um, I was just trying to see where I have that. I'll come back to it, member, and I will inform you. But I also want to say, Mr. Speaker, that I want to thank the Minister for Equity and the Minister for Agriculture, Mr. Speaker. So, because my ministry, working with their ministry, have been able to assist some 89 of our members of cooperatives with benefiting from having access to the COVID-19 pandemic um, support of $1,500, Mr. Speaker. Um, so some 89 of our, of our cooperative members will be receiving the $1,500. So I want to, to thank members for this. Um, you're trying to check something else? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. Mr. Speaker, while I wait for that information, Export St. Lucia, I want to speak about our national export strategy, which is a critical issue, Mr. Speaker, for St. Lucia. And I am pleased that on the on page 245, division 090, some $92,000 was provided for us to facilitate the appointment of a coordinator to implement our national export strategy, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there is one responsibility that has been given to, to me and to the Ministry of Commerce by the Honorable Prime Minister and that responsibility is to um, commence an industry with the cannabis, cannabis industry, Mr. Speaker. And we have done significant work in that regard, Mr. Speaker. Um, but I want to bring you to page 236 on the project code 0453, where there is some 800 thousand dollars mr speaker and that this amount mr speaker has been placed there to fund the operation of the regulated substance authority mr speaker mr speaker when we started working on the cannabis um, the issue of the cannabis bill mr speaker we found it necessary after much discussion and research to come first before this Honorable House with a regulated substance authority bill, Mr. Speaker, which was passed in this Honorable House. Thank you. Which was passed in this Honorable House, Mr. Speaker. So now I am pleased that we have some EC $800,000 in the budget so that this authority um, will have the will come into being, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I must tell you that uh, a board has been appointed and just last week, Mr. Speaker, we went further to having what you call a Caribbean Cannabis Symposium so that we can focus on the second part of the issue, which is to finalize the cannabis bill, Mr. Speaker, and to see how we can can bring this to fruition. So, Mr. Speaker, I believe, let me see. Huh? Um, No, that's not the issue, no. It had to be on the Ministry of Commerce. Yeah. Sorry. So, Mr. Speaker, this, Mr. Speaker, is my reporting of the performance of my ministry. And now, with your guidance, Mr. Speaker, with me. 
with your permission, Mr. Speaker, I will turn to my constituency. Um, Mr. Speaker, for 2023, my mission of working collaboratively with my constituents in transforming the constituents of Sufre for Sheshak continued with much vigor and passion. Our 2021 tagline, together let us transform Sufre for Sheshak, remain more relevant today than yesterday. So Mr. Speaker, for the year under review, the constituency of Sufre for Sheshak, sorry, received much help from our community development program, which is the CDP, Mr. Speaker. And what I'm going to do now, Mr. Speaker, with your permission, is to report on how we used our CDP last year, and then to say what we propose to do in addition to some of the other items under the budget head, how we are going to implement them, Mr. Speaker. So I will do this under the subheading Infrastructural Development, Educational and Skills Development Program, Agricultural Development, Housing Improvement, Business Development, Community and Cultural Development, Tourism Development, Economic Development. Mr. Speaker, I will attempt to give details of each program executed in the constituency under the CDP, and most of them, Mr. Speaker, I had to get support with, from other funders. Infrastructural development. The following projects were undertaken. Some are still in progress. And I would say, Mr. Speaker, at the beginning, we focused on safety of our people. And we started at the, in Mini Fonchejac, an area that is very prone to landslide. And we did extensive infrastructural and drainage work in Mini Fonchejac, Mr. Speaker. Then we move on with the help again from the Ministry of Infrastructure. We did the installation of guardrails on the Fonchejac main road on the Sufra main road, Sufra Castries main road, and part of the Fort Saint Jacques um, road to Myers Bridge, Mr. Speaker. Because knowing Sufra, we had quite a few areas that are very precarious, and we felt we needed to do this. So I want to take this moment to thank the member for Castries North, Mr. Speaker, for facilitating these infrastructural works. Mr. Speaker, we moved to three. We focus on recreation and wellness. We did the renovation of the Fort Bernier Park. Phase one is completed, and phase two will start shortly. We went on to the construction of the new development park, outdoor gym, and again, phase one has commenced with support from the NIC, we provided the equipment for the gym and some funding. And phase two, Mr. Speaker, will be funded by the, phase two will be funded from CDP, Mr. Speaker. Construction of a free classroom structure at the SCSS, Mr. Speaker, and that was funded through the support of the Minister for Finance, Mr. Speaker. We had the renovation of a wing of the Sufre Primary School, and that, Mr. Speaker, was done through the Ministry of Equity under the BNTF program, Mr. Speaker. Um, we had the renovation of the food and nutrition room at the SCSS, Mr. Speaker, and that was funded with CDP and with some support from Anshasne, Jade Mountain, Mr. Speaker. And on the community development, we constructed a community center at Bouton, and there we use CDP funding, Mr. Speaker. And this year, God willing, with the, under the CDP program, we will be purchasing the furniture and equipment for that center, Mr. Speaker. 
So, Mr. Speaker, let me just interrupt this to reply to the, the member for Viewfort, <laughs> for Viewfort South. So, uh, the works, Mr. Um, Honorable Member, Free Societies, Goodwill, Fishermen, Property for Grosile. Library, fishers, a new fishing complex in Miku, and where is Vufort now? The project will also address electrical work and preliminary repairs at Goodwill Fishermen Cooperative. That's Vufort. Vufort South. So are you a little happier with me now? <laughs> So yes, so it's Viewfort, Grosile, <laughs> Library. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, back to constituency work. You are most welcome, member. Educational and skills development program, Mr. Speaker. Again, using CDP funds, we instituted an after-school program in collaboration with the Sufa Regional Development Foundation. And there are some 80 children are benefiting. And they are from Sufa, Foshajak, Itangs. From my CDP. <laughs> my CDP, I mean, each time I look at the CDP, I, I just ask the Lord to bless it, just as he, he blessed the bread. And that's what I do. I put a little, I multiply that, the Lord multiplies that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, when I think in terms of education, I think of the back to school assistance that was provided to our students, and, and that was done through Ministry of Equity, where 462 students um, got assistance at back to school. Parents received some $300 if they had one child. $500 to two children, and three, if they have three or more, they receive some $700, Mr. Speaker. Under the, with the SSDF, this came to about $150,600. And in addition to that, Mr. Speaker, through the SRDF, which is the Super Regional Development Foundation, an additional 281 students received back to school assistance, again totaling some 229 1395 Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm saying all of this to say that on the head 51, with some $55 million, I look forward for some similar support for my students for this coming year, Mr. Speaker. Again, Mr. Speaker, on the education, under my using my CDP again. Train some 21 young men and two ladies. They receive training to become certified boat captains, Mr. Speaker. That's important for us, Mr. Speaker. So some of those persons, what we're doing now is to help them apply for support under the youth program, the um, youth economy program, Mr. Speaker, and to see where we can help them start and become owners of their own boats. Mr. Speaker, on the education again, with CDP and with the help of Cabot Cares, we trained some 40 young persons registered in accounting course 101, Mr. Speaker. 26 participants were successful in the accounting course, and they have now moved um, to start another course called Consumer Customer Service and Critical Thinking, Mr. Speaker. And the objective of this training program is to prepare our unemployed persons to see how they can get employment. We now have a new business process management company in Sufre, and we are hoping our strategy is to work and train those persons to prepare them for work. So again, Mr. Speaker, my CDP is being multiplied. Mrs. Yeah,
Yeah? Tenfold, Mr. Speaker. I put a drop there and then I go out and see who can help me. On the area of agriculture, Mr. Speaker, again, using CDP, we provided greenhouse and seed funding to Bellevue Cooperative, Mr. Speaker. Um, this cooperative has, um, it was once a very vibrant cooperative. Um, a greenhouse, yes. Yeah. Um, Bellevue Cooperative is a critical um, institution for Region 8, Mr. Speaker. And when you look at where it's at, um, it has, it's in trouble. So my challenge now is to use the CDP to work with my colleague minister and minister in the Ministry of Agriculture to see how best we can breathe new life in the Bellevue Cooperative, Mr. Speaker. So we've provided them with assistance. We've given them a greenhouse. Export St. Lucia is working with them to see how best we can renovate the chill room for them, Mr. Speaker. Um, all, of, all towards food security. Agriculture again, Mr. Speaker. Um, presentation of fertilizer and chicken manure to my Fosche Jack farmers, Mr. Speaker. Again, through CDP and again through partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture. We have done market research, Mr. Speaker, and through CDP we are working to ensure that we increase the production of dashing in the Fosche Jack area. And what we have done, we have delivered to the first 12 farmers that were ready some $1,500 each to support them, Mr. Speaker, in terms of ex expanding the dashing production. And Mr. Speaker, I need to tell you that based on further research that we have done, we, are, we have identified an additional 34 farmers who are going to receive, who are now ready to receive additional funds of $1,500 each so that dashing cultivation in Fauchajac is at a different level so that the markets that we have identified um, we will meet it and that our, the lives of our farmers would improve. Mr. Speaker, and I think I've mentioned that, that with the help of the ministry, my ministry, we have replaced the ice machine at the Sufra Fishers Cooperative, Mr. Speaker. So housing improvement, Mr. Speaker, 2023, 2024, we handed over, with the help of the Ministry of Housing and Local Government, we handed over deeds to the occupants of the Mocha houses. And this exercise continues, Mr. Speaker. We rely on the Ministry of Housing and Local Government. But what we do is to ensure that this has happened. Mr. Speaker, again under that program, we were able to provide and improve the roofing at the Palmis project, housing project. Some 82 homes um, were impacted, Mr. Speaker. That's the Palmis housing project. We also went to the next part of the, of the Palmis estate and we, what we call the Black, Blackstone section, Mr. Speaker. And that section, believe it or not, still had asbestos. And Mr. Speaker, with um, the support of the Honorable Prime Minister and with support from my CDP, we were able to remove the asbestos shingles from all the houses in that area, both for Palmis and for the Market Road residents. So now, Mr. Speaker, I breathe a sign of relief that my constituents of Palmis and my constituent of Market Road Sufre do not reside in houses still covered with asbestos. With the help of this government, we were able to give them a new roof. Again on the housing, Mr. Speaker, Emma Kes. Hmm. Barons Drive, Mr. Speaker, uh, Barons Drive, we know that the uh, stalwarts of this 
support for this administration and mr speaker we've started our home repair program in the barons drive area so far we have touched at least 23 homes there and the work continues so i want to take this moment to thank both the minister for finance and the minister for housing and local government for this critical program mr speaker but i want to tell you like others that the list of names persons asking for support is endless and this is always a challenge to determine who you're helping first because they are all in need mr speaker so i'm really hoping we can get a lot more support under that project mr speaker on the business development again using my little cdp mr speaker I was able to establish the Sufre Vendors Association. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> we didn't know how to split it. We established the Sufre Vendors Association, Mr. Speaker. They started with 91 members, and now they are just about 150 members. Most of them women, Mr. Speaker. And they received some seed monies. Some have not received, but the first 91 have received. Each of them received some $700, Mr. Speaker. $500 coming from our C my CDP allocation, and $200 coming from the Sufra Regional Development Foundation. We are getting technical support from the Foshaja Credit Union, Mr. Speaker. And I want to take this moment to thank the Ministry of Tourism that has come in and provide training to those persons, Mr. Speaker. Again, on the business development, Mr. Speaker, um, through my ministry, through my office in Sufre, we assisted over... Member for Sufre, for Sejak, you have 15 minutes. 15. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We, have, we assisted some 50 persons in preparing their business plans, Mr. Speaker, and I'm happy to report, as I've said, that some 61 persons applied. On the community and cultural development, Mr. Speaker, the Sufre Carnival, I want again, at the beginning, we had certain challenges, Mr. Speaker, but we know that it was a success. Sufre Jazz, a stellar act, Mr. Speaker. I want to take the moment to thank Mr. Samoje, the Sufre Events Committee. Samoje, Mephodius Rocks Plessin, Julian Matrin and the team for this, Mr. Speaker, for the hard work they do in ensuring that Sufre provide first class services in terms of events hosting, Mr. Speaker. I also want to recognize the work that we did on the Creole Heritage Month, Mr. Speaker. And for the first time, we brought the entire community. Uh, we had activities in all the communities, Barons Rive, Fonchon Lib, Zenon, Bouton, Chateau Belay, Souffre Town. And again, I want to thank that team and Ms. Krishna and Bryce who headed it and Glenja Charles for embracing culture. Within that as well, Mr. Speaker, we brought in an item that is a legacy item for us and that is Kudme Soufouye, where we brought the community together and they went into construction of homes, cleaning of health center, um, painting of cemetery walls, planting of flowers, road repair, erection of road safety barriers. Young, old, I see members, yellow, red, we brought the community together, Mr. Speaker, and I, we want us to have this every year as a legacy program where we bring the community into self-help. I want to recognize the work that was done in Fonche Jacques, Mr. Speaker, where persons like Mrs. Sandra Prosper and her team at the Fonche Jacques Development Committee, they brought in another project as well, Jeunesse Creole, which is a pageant that we want to have every year, where we are trying to get the young people to embrace our culture, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank, on the area of tourism, I want to thank um, the member for Castries South and his permanent secretary 
for completing the Palmis booth, Mr. Speaker, to enable the operators to run this, Mr. Speaker. Under the area of youth development, Mr. Speaker, um, hosting of the job fair, Mr. Speaker, supporting our footballers, Mr. Speaker, they've made us proud in terms of being the black hat champions, Mr. Speaker. And I want to tell them today that we are committed, I'm committed to working with them to ensure that sports is alive and well in Sufre, Mr. Speaker. I want to take this moment to thank the coaches and the volunteers for the work that they do day after day with our youth. So, Mr. Speaker, the work to be initiated this year, when I look again under the CDP and I've raised it, I want to get into infrastructure and deal with the Eton slope stabilization. And I notice infrastructure on the head 43, that provision is made for this. It's very dangerous and we must address it urgently. And more than anything else, Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about my roads. The roads at Smith Street, Fonchon Jacques de Wash, Crestland, Fonchon Jacques to Myers Bridge, Fonchon Jacques Main Road, Chateau Bel Air, Don Feebles Road, Lenny Hill, Mini Fonchon Jacques, Belvidere Fonchon Jacques, Chateau Bel Air, Fonchon Libre, Upper Victoria Street, Boisdain to Belfort. Roads in new development, upper and lower new development. The Bouton Road, the Riverside Road next to the library, Barron's Drive Road to Margaret Toots, Fort Benny Road, Bay Street. All of this, Mr. Speaker, are roads that require significant attention, Mr. Speaker. And I am hoping and I I've received the commitment of the Honorable Member for Castries North. Member, you have 10 minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, that he is going to cast an eye and see how best we can get some reprieve, Mr. Speaker. For other areas that we need, Mr. Speaker, the completion of the Bouton Colabet Water Project. Again, it is part of infrastructure. Um, the, for Bhutto again, the Bhutto bus stop and lay by, Mr. Speaker. Under the community development program, a community center in Chateau Bel Air, Mr. Speaker. Um, for infrastructure on the head 56, improvement to road electrification throughout the constituency. We've developed, we have conducted an audit, Mr. Speaker and we need almost 300 lamps in the constituency. So we've passed that information on, Mr. Speaker. Um, for Barron's Drive on the CDP, Mr. Speaker, um, a learning center for the people of Barron's Drive, renovation of the IT center again on the CDP, and I want some collaboration there with the Minister for Education on that area, Mr. Speaker. For Sufre, I wait the project with GPH, Mr. Speaker, because of the impact it's going to have on the lives of my people. On the head 56 Department of Economic Affairs, Mr. Speaker, I welcome the construction for the new hospital, Mr. Speaker. It is an area that my constituency has been screaming for, and I really hope um, that we can really commence it this year, Mr. Speaker. In the area of agriculture under Head 41, I want to thank the member for Denry South for his support thus far, and to thank him for our, the additional fact that we're going to give our fishers and uh, additional support for our dashing farmers, and some support as well for additional support for Bellevue Corp, because they really need it. I also would look forward to some water tanks for my livestock farmers, fertilizer again for my farmers, my farmers, my farmers, member. So under the head 46, which is tourism, Mr. Speaker, I am hoping that we can get our Torai vending booth and the construction of the viewing point near at Mount Kubaral, Mr. Speaker. 
On the housing improvement on the head 48, I see 1.78 million dollars there, Mr. Speaker. And the main thing there is the continuation of the home repair program, Mr. Speaker. In the area of youth development and sport head 54, um, where I see some 12.6 million, Mr. Speaker, I'm excited that the member for Brosile has given us some comfort that some sporting infrastructure will receive some attention, Mr. Speaker. My sportsmen and women are expecting and I'm requesting on their behalf installation of lights on the Koshesha Court, um, construction of Zeno, multi Zeno Multipurpose Court, additional seating for Sufra Stadium, introduction of netball in Sufra, as well as alternative sports. I want to thank the member, Mr. Um, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the member for the significant support that he has provided to Sufre so far. And you know what is good for Sufre is good for Canaries as well as Suzel. So we are, we are in between pulling the two constituencies with us. So thank you again, member, for the work that you're doing here. We are really hoping that we can get a place for our cricketers. And that is where I'm, I'm crying with free eyes, Mrs. Speaker. <laughs> Our cricketers, you know, they were doing well, and now we have difficulty in identifying a space for them to practice. Mr. Speaker, for our youth, I want to thank um, the SRG, SSDF for the social survey that they've conducted for us. We are hoping in the coming weeks to sit and discuss it. But one key thing that we're trying to do, Mr. Speaker, is to initiate what you call a Project HOPE, to provide mentorship. Remember, you have five minutes left. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To provide mentorship, job training, and seed money to our young people, to give them a helping hand so that they can change and transform their lives, Mr. Speaker. In the area of digitization, Mr. Speaker, I... I'm working and I'm pleased to report that we are installing a community-wide Wi-Fi program in Sufre, Mr. Speaker. That is significant for us to ensure that, yes, all our people can access Wi-Fi, especially on our visitors, Mr. Speaker. We are saying that Sufre is different and forward-thinking. I'm also hoping that we can install a modern and state-of-the-art computers at the Sufre IT Center, Mr. Speaker. The flooring is gone, so again, I'll have to stretch my CDP to see how we can restore that. And finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to, I see on the head 21, the distress fund. I have some of my fissures that the boats got damaged after the high seas there. And I have some of my fissures, the house got burned, so I'll be coming to the minister, the member for Castries East, to see how I can bring some comfort to those persons, Mr. Speaker. And finally, Mr. Speaker, our elderly, they have served us well, and I am working again for my CDP and some community persons to see how best we can start and construct a seniors daycare for the seniors of Sufre. They've worked, and a lot of them at their homes without the right food, without um, person's companionship, and I believe that we should do that so that they can have something to eat, have a place to recreate, and then they can go home at their ho they can go to their homes in the evening. So Mr. Speaker, in closing, I endorse this estimate of revenue and expenditure. And I pray God for the strength and stamina for our Prime Minister and our Cabinet colleagues to deliver to the people of this country what is contained in this document. I thank you, Mrs. Speaker. The member for Suzelle Saltibus.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, colleagues. Mr. Speaker, every time budget time comes around, you know, I am always, you know, amazed by how time flies. And, you know, always want to give thanks, you know, um, thanks and praise. First fellow Syrians 5.8 says, give thanks in all things. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I note that the proceedings so far have been without disturbance of any kind, although I just noticed a little back and forth, and I'm hoping it's not going to start now. I, there's, a, there's a glaring absence in, in, in the chamber right now, and that may be responsible, but... Um, <laughs> but, but, Mr. Speaker, um, we will, we will hopefully go forward with, you know, very healthy exchange. Mr. Speaker, I want to acknowledge the presence for the member for Babono. Madam, I'm very happy to see you, and you look very well. You know, but, you know, I, I don't rush the brush, you know, just take it easy, you know, because many of us, you know, have, have had our challenges, and Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you can appreciate, you know, we have to give thanks. We have to give thanks for every day that we live, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I indulge your patience in I'm trying to I'm trying to focus, yes, yes. I indulge your patience, Mr. Speaker, in my brief preamble just to guide the way um, that I will be going forward. And Mr. Speaker, it is very likely that someone following our parliament would observe that the government in office would rather not have the opposition present during parliamentary debates. On the contrary, Mr. Speaker, a healthy doc a healthy democracy would relish constructive discourse without the slander and mapery that has unfortunately become a norm in your house. It's a fact, it's a fact. Mr. Speaker, the estimates of revenue and expenditure presented leaves ample space for speculation and inconsistency. And my contribution today would be mainly seeking clarification and expressing concerns identified to date. Of course, Mr. Speaker, I say to date because, you know, um, as we go along through the year, you know, certain things are identified and you would like to speak about it. And so, Mr. Speaker, I make my contribution well intended, contrary to the statements made by the from member, and he has already started, the member from Beaufort North, from, from, from Denry North, who somehow believes that I make nasty remarks, and I'm still waiting for him to advise me on the nasty remarks that you know, I make. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure what bug I have put in his, in, his, in, his, in his nest, but apparently there's something that irritates him whenever I, I make a statement. Of course, Mr. Speaker, I will make mention to matters relating to my constituency, but will be more detailed when we return to the House to discuss the appropriation bill. As stated by the member, the Minister of Finance, we're hoping to return on April 23rd. Mr. Speaker, as I listened to the Minister of Finance, I had reason to reflect on the performance of the past administration while I, which I served in. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I reflected on the onslaught of COVID-19 and the crippling effect it had on our economy. Many, included members opposite, attempted to downplay the occasion and the aftermath of the pandemic. But history will reflect that the government of the United Workers' Party was a divine intervention to save St. Lucia from the chaos and pandemonium that the COVID brought upon us, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, 
The Minister of Finance, the member for Castries East, indicated that wages and salaries cost the government about $575 million annually and made up about 30% of total expenditure. In addition, Mr. Speaker, debt servicing and interest payments of about $370 million, or roughly 20%. Mr. Speaker, during the COVID pandemic, nobody had compassion for the government in office. I remember dealing with the trade unions, Mr. Speaker, and obviously the opposition then had no compassion as well. Mr. Speaker, you are fully aware that any default in debt and what the application would be for a country. Mr. Speaker, we never missed a payment or a debt obligation. And Mr. Speaker, we did all that and the price of fuel never went past $13.95. Today, Mr. Speaker, we hear about a surplus budget. Today, Mr. Speaker, we hear about a surplus budget. I think the, 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 the Prime Minister spoke about a surplus of about $100 million. The question, Mr. Speaker, is could that surplus not be used to subsidize fuel at the pump? That is how you put people first. Mr. Speaker, where is the benefit? What is the benefit, Mr. Speaker, and where is the benefit to the public of boasting of surplus? Mr. Speaker, you know the government balance sheet is very unique to what we know as a, a, a balance sheet, Mr. Speaker. And the government balance sheet is very unique. And when it comes to surplus, the government obviously can decide how they adjust that surplus. As government, and, and Mr. Speaker, you know, the thing about it is, the people out there can interpret, can interpret that a surplus could mean either overtaxing or not using the money for the people. Mr. Speaker, in fact, when you boast of a surplus, it can also be interpreted as a, a rich man continuing to, 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 to praise and worship the money he has in the bank, but not taking care of his children. Mr. Speaker, But Mr. Speaker, very importantly, very importantly, Mr. Speaker, that's my handwriting, honorable member, that's my handwriting. Mr. Speaker, there was a revelation that was made and, and, and the solution public needs to take it very, very serious, Mr. Speaker, because it appears to me, Mr. Speaker, that the government has finally opened a lockbox. Because according to the Honorable Prime Minister, the lockbox that could not be found, he was able to pay DFCs not only for 2023, but for 2024. And you know, Mr. Speaker, isn't, I think that's extremely amazing. That's extremely amazing, Mr. Speaker, because it appears that the lockbox is working the magic. Mr. Speaker, you found a friend? Mr. Speaker, <laughs> the then opposition had everything negative to say on our borrowing <laughs> to keep the country moving. But since coming into office, this government has also borrowed millions in the name of COVID and wants to give merit to their borrowing, but consider our borrowing reckless. When civil servants, Mr. Speaker, never missed a paid it. Mr. Speaker, I strongly believe, and I'm consistent in the House, that there is a time and a place for all borrowing, as long as the people we serve benefit. But Mr. Speaker, let's move on. And you can pay it back. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Finance 
no less than six times in his presentation spoke about administrative bottlenecks preventing the efficient deliverables. And I say that again, Mr. Speaker. The Minister of Finance, the Honorable Prime Minister, spoke no less than six times about administrative bottlenecks preventing the efficient deliveries, deliverables, sorry. Mr. Speaker, I am not sure if what the Honorable Prime Minister was referring to was meant to speak to government bureaucracy and the delivery of efficient service to the general public. Because if that is what he's speaking about, I support him 100%. Because based on what we are all aware of, when we have voices from various quarters, people complain on what seems like an eternity to get supposedly simple matters finalized. The very member who sits next to me now, the member from Beaufort North, South, sorry, has lamented the challenges, the difficulties, and how onerous it has been for himself and members in his profession to get things done, particularly at various registries. registries. So I seek clarification, Honorable Prime Minister, because on one hand, while I believe that you may be speaking about bureaucracy, it could also be interpreted that the bottlenecks refer to something else. And I, I actually faced it in government as well, various bottlenecks, but I do believe that some of the bottlenecks that they have in government is to protect us from ourselves. I'm obviously, Mr. Speaker, I'm in no position to, to lecture the Minister of Finance because in his profession, his, his exposure and, and a number of um, um, job assignments he had, he would be very, very um, familiar with, with um, what we call um, systems and procedures. Um, he would be very familiar with that. So, Mr. Speaker, under head 14, Electoral Department, Mr. Speaker, just some observations that I have made. I notice an increase under the recurrent expenditure of just over $1.7 million. Um, from my experience, I know elections cost a lot more than that, but there are lots of questions that I would like to ask as to whether is that preparation for elections? Is that a particular census that we are going to be seeing coming? Or are we finally going to address the whole issues of boundaries? So these are the questions that I would like to, to, to ask just on that uh, Member particular Member surely the appropriate place for that would have been the Standing Finance Committee. Mr. Speaker, I am referring to what is in the, in, in the estimates and but revenue. It is the estimates and, and revenue that the Standing Finance Committee approved. And it is after I called each head, I called upon members whether they had any questions. I'm not saying that the Minister of Finance will not respond to you. I'm saying to you, the more appropriate place for those questions was in fact the Standing Finance Committee. I appreciate your guidance, Mr. Speaker, but we would have been there all day if I had to address some of the questions that, so I, I, I think... Uh, well, member, one of the things I don't think members appreciate is that the first job is a member of parliament. Guided, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under head 41, Ministry of Agriculture, I notice a, a slight decline, Mr. Speaker, and obviously I'm concerned because as a government that promotes, you know, um, eat what you grow and grow what you eat. You know, Mr. Speaker, I would have expected to see a major in, in, in input, particularly to subsidize farmers to diversify. Mr. Speaker, we're very familiar that it is very difficult to obtain good labor now on the farms. We are, we are also familiar with the, the cost of labor. 
I, I applaud the, the, the Minister of Agriculture because I am aware that he has sourced some tillers. I believe a lot more of that should be um, distributed throughout the, the communities. But Mr. Speaker, I believe a lot more should be done with regards to purchasing seedlings, seeds. Um, the member for, for Soufre Francis Jacques had to purchase a greenhouse from her CDP. I believe that should be a, on, on, a, on a wider scale from the Ministry of Agriculture to get these for our farmers. Um, irrigation, Mr. Speaker, irrigation lines, Mr. Speaker, is critical for, for, for our farmers. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm sure the, the Minister of Agriculture is very familiar with the Delce water tank and you can see the, the, the miracles that it, it does for the farmers there. So the irrigation is critical, Mr. Speaker. I, I note, Mr. Speaker, that there was also some funds um, subscribed to enhancing the cocoa sector cocoa sector enhancement project and I'm hoping that um, you know we do grow certain parts of Chozel very very good cocoa Mr. Speaker and um, I'm hoping that you know there would be some sort of you know um, allocation made to specific farmers in the areas of Chozel, Saltibus that, um, they, they, that, that could take advantage of that Mr. Speaker but more so Mr. Speaker and, and I want to tie both the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Commerce um, with regards to the whole cocoa and, and, and value added as it relates to you know what we produce Mr. Speaker. For too long we've been exporting and have to bring back you know some of the things that we, we export. We see the various areas in the in Soufre, in Babono, we recognize people who make the chocolate Mr. Speaker but there's so much more that can be done with, with, with what we grow Mr. Speaker. In fact um, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, 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 I have a, a friend, you know, every time I travel, you know, he said to me, make sure you bring up my, 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 my braps for me, that's how we refer to um, um, breadfruit, you know. And um, he took me one time to see the kind of byproducts that are made with breadfruit, you know, um, in Miami, Mr. Speaker. Um, uh, and, and it's amazing what we can do, but, you know, we need to start to focus a lot more on what we can do with the very things that we grow, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, I, I also want to, to recognize the growth in our CMOS industry. Um, it, it's, it's going in the right direction. I want to applaud the Schuerzel Fisherman Cooperative for having an alliance with the Schuerzel Secondary School. And they were able to produce something like 32 kilograms of very, very good CMOS. And, um, you know, we're hoping that we could see that sort of exercise being done in other schools, you know, to encourage and give various options to school leavers in terms of what they can get into, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I cannot um, leave the issue of agriculture and fisheries without speaking about the impact that the work that's, ha that's been done on the Schuerzel fish port um, rehabilitation of $5.3 million, Mr. Speaker. And I want to again thank the Japanese government and JICA for, you know, um, supporting us um, when we went up to Japan and ensuring that we were able to um, obtain these funds. And I'm really hoping that the issue in the Shuazel fish port would be one that is, we will see the back of, Mr. Speaker. Um, I have been thinking, Mr. Speaker, um, in terms of how maybe the Ministry of Agriculture can also assist farmers. And, and Mr. Speaker, I think one of the areas that we need to look at is the high cost that our farmers pay when they do not have irrigation from a river source or a spring, and they have to use Wasco. Um, however, Wasco would charge them at a commercial rate. Um, I think maybe the time has come for us to provide some sort of subsidy for our farmers um, and encourage them maybe to hire one or two people and then based on you know the kind of employment they create we can provide subsidies as it relates to helping them with the the wasco bill because that's a very um, big input the cost particularly now we're hearing that um 2024 would be an extremely patched year and you can well imagine you know the struggles of uh, some of our farmers will be going through you know um during that that, that drought period so um, it's just something I think that we need to start um, exploring in terms of how much more assistance can be given to our, our farmers. 
Mr. Speaker, the, 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 the member for Soufre Fonse Jacques, she's just, she spoke just before me, and um, I, I, I got the impression that she would be speaking after me because maybe she thought maybe I would, you know, raise various issues under her ministry. Um, but, you know, Mr. Speaker, and I've, I've, told, I've told the member for Soufre Fonse Jacques that sometimes she reads me very wrong. Just like some time ago, she, she, she made an accusation of something I said, which I, I, I have said to her that I never said it, Mr. Speaker. But I noticed there was a slight increase under recurrent expenditure. And I just want to ask the question as to whether that would be as a result of, um, as, as she admitted, that the ministry may have to source sugar from outside of the region, and whether that increase could be um, as a result of that, but it is something, Mr. Speaker, that I'm concerned about because, you know, if we have to pass on the cost to particularly our small business people who thrive on some of the, the sugar um, derivatives that they make, you know, um, the juices, the fudges, the thing, you know, obviously there's a domino effect and everything, you know, would, would um, increase. I think maybe the time has come and maybe with the advent of the new warehouse, that we look very closely as to whether the people that we provide some of the, the rice flour sugar at subsidy costs, whether we need to start identifying the vulnerable sectors that really need that. And, and I mean, why would various hotels want to take advantage of you know, the, the subsidies that we provide? So maybe the time has come for us to really hone in on the people who particularly need these um, subsidies, you know, and, and work with that. I, I mean, it, it's some work to do, but it's something that we need to start because we cannot, we cannot maintain that kind of subsidies in the long term, Mr. Speaker, and we really have to, you know, look at, look at it from a serious standpoint, Mr. Speaker. Um, I also, as I said earlier, Mr. Speaker, um, I do believe, and maybe even under the MSME facility, um, we need to encourage particularly, particularly um, the, 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 the southern um, constitu constituencies um, where, where agriculture maybe is a, a, a more way of life, that if they can come up with the, 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 the value-added products that will be quicker to assist them in, in getting some of the loans to purchase the machinery and everything. You know, we have already amended um, the Fiscal Incentive Act to accommodate various machinery coming in, Mr. Speaker. And so now I believe we need, you know, let's encourage our people to, you know, diversify. Um, Mr. Speaker, the member for Castries Southeast, is it Southeast? Um, Mr. Speaker, this morning he was not his usual self. I, I, I will admit he was not his usual self this morning. Um, normally, you know, I listen, I listen intently to his presentation, but I believe this morning he was a little um, all over the place, Mr. Speaker. Um, you know, making statements that like, your first be your last, that is dead, bury your dead, you know, things like that. So, so, Mr. Speaker, and I believe, Mr. Speaker, it could be as a di direct result of the significant reduction in his. In his budget, Mr. Speaker, he may, he may not have been too happy about that. But that's just, that's just, that's just me assuming, Mr. Speaker, because I, was, I actually was extremely taken aback, extremely taken about, Mr. Speaker, and we can turn to page... Serious reduction. I, I, I mean, there's a portion of it that has been transferred to the, minister, the Ministry of Tourism, which is the NCA, obviously, as he, as he, as he rightfully said, that's the right place, so I, I have no qualms in that. Um, but very surprised, Mr. Speaker, um, on the page, page 448, page 448, line uh, 1601, public assistance, Mr. Speaker, public assistance has dropped to over $10 million. I, I find that extremely hard to to agree to, to support mr speaker considering you know the a government that speaks 
No, 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 no. 1601 speaks to public assistance. Yes, and it dropped, it, it, last year it was 26. No, 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 no. Um, you, you, you look at wrong figures, honorable member. You look at wrong figures. Yeah, the figures, the figures are right there, unless you, unless you got a different, yeah, yeah but that, that's what it is, you know? So um, I, I think, I mean, public assistance, and we know, all of us know as parliamentary reps, you know, the pressure we have to bear. The, 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 the member for Grosley told you about the, the number of people that he has come into his office, Mr. Speaker. So when the government makes such a significant reduction, you know, it is, it is a concern, and, and I'm hoping that the, 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 the Prime Minister can maybe speak about it. Yeah. I also want to caution the member for Castri Southeast because, you know, he was boasting about some of the initiatives and one of them he said that Castri Southeast will get their own truck and their own pickup. I want to caution him about that, Mr. Speaker, because I remember when I first came into office in 2016, Chosel Saltibus Constituency Council had, in, had an excavator and a truck, and they were both rotting away. Be one of the reasons was that the, the, the constituency council could not maintain it. In addition to that, I think the member comes from a constituency where they have the most trucks in St. Lucia. Most trucks in St. Lucia. I lime. I lime. I lime. So I do that. I lime. <laughs> so, um, you know, to make such a statement, I believe, you know, I think he's treading on very dangerous and sensitive, uh, sensitive area, Mr. Speaker. So, you're taking work away from your constituents, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, despite the fact that the member for Denry North, you know, occasionally chides me, I must say that um, there are areas in, in, under his portfolio that I'm very happy to see increases on. And one of the areas, Mr. Speaker, is the area of adult literacy. And I say so, Mr. Speaker, because um, in my former life, I remember um, sponsoring or recommending sponsorship to ad an adult literacy program in Bus, Bus Laguas. And I actually had to go to some of the night classes and make some presentations, Mr. Speaker. And I can tell you, it was an extremely rewarding exercise um, to see how some of the adults embraced the program. And at the end of the day, you could have, it was very visible, some of the improvements in terms of their ability to read and write and sign their name, Mr. Speaker. So I'm hoping that that literacy, other literacy program is something that is island-wide. I'm also hoping that as also the Minister of Sustainable Development, the member will try to ensure that there's some education with regards to keeping our environment pristine, Mr. Speaker. Because I believe a lot of the older people are very guilty of thinking that it is okay to you know, do various practices that are dangerous to the environment. Um, you know, when I drive with my young kids, Mr. Speaker, and we see people fling things out of a vehicle, they ask the question, why are people doing that? You know, because they understand, and it's being taught in a big way at our schools, the preservation of our environment. So they know when they see certain things that it is wrong. And so I'm hoping that in that other literacy program, you know, there is a component to address the whole environmental and, 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 and protecting our environment. Because, Mr. Speaker, the future generation will be the ones judging us. Um, the member also spoke about the school rehabilitation. And um, I, I think it was sometime last year when he came to the house to um, alone. And he got significant sums. And he did indicate that um, two schools in Chuzel would be getting some support. So it is something that, you know, I, uh, I, I appreciate. But I also want to, and, and, and the, the, the member was extremely passionate in his delivery, particularly as he relates to other people wanting to take the role of 
which is rightfully his. And he spoke, Mr. Speaker, very, very passionate about that. And I want to encourage him to continue to speak like that as a member for um, Denry North. Because if it's wrong, it's always wrong. Wrong can never be right on, depending on what side you are. And Mr. Speaker, I can tell you, and the Honorable Prime Minister may not be aware of it, but there are interventions happening in my community that I'm not even aware of, you know? I'm not even aware of various interventions happening in my community, okay? And I'm getting to know about certain things after the fact, okay? And, and um, education too, because the various rehabilitations that I'm, that I'm not aware of, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, recommend contractors. You, you want to share it. You want to share it. You share it. But, but that's for another story. But uh, there's one more thing I, I, I thought I should mention, which is a very curious. I, and I made, the, the member spoke about um, that under his budget, they would be paying off a significant portion of um, outstanding fees to UE regarding the law. Yeah, yeah. But I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of curious because, and I was indicating to the member for Beaufort South that as far as I can remember, law has not been on the priority list. So I was wondering how far back this thing, thing goes because if, and, and you may, it may have gone very far because, because what you're saying is um, the, the university was saying that they will no longer accept our, 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 our yeah, because of that. So, so that could be something that goes way back, but I, I know, that that was something that um, that was removed on the, on the priority list a while back. Sorry, nine hundred. Okay, so I think you spoke about half a million. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, my good friend is also my parliamentary rep, although I don't vote in his constituency. Head fifty-four. Mr. Speaker, the government has on several occasions told whoever is listening that their plans for improving sporting facilities and capturing and assisting talented sportsmen and women. No problem in that, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, if we are honest, I think various administrations have recognized that the approach to honing this talent should be more precise and forward and focused. Mr. Speaker, it was with this conviction that the last administration heralded the, the, the Sports Academy, Mr. Speaker. And obviously, when you introduce something, there's always going to be room for improvement. And, and so, Mr. Speaker, um, we did improve sporting facilities. Um, there was major lighting done um, in various fields, Mr. Speak, Mr. Speaker. Um, and the lighting was particularly um, with regards to our athletes having more flexibility with their time so that you know, when they come from work, they, they have the avenue so that they can you know, conduct their various disciplines. Of course, Mr. Speaker, I think it's extremely important that the playing areas, the surfaces, the academy, all of that is useless if we do not have very, very rigid programs in place to encourage our clubs, and our individuals to take advantage of what is available. And Mr. Speaker, it is very important that collaboration should be done with the various communities and the sports desk, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I note, and I will speak to some of the concerns. And Mr. Speaker, yes, I'm guided by your advice and maybe next time I'm wrong, I will, I will go in that direction. But Mr. Speaker, I note of concern to me, Mr. Speaker, page 608, grants and contributions. And Mr. Speaker, I note that an amount of $1,813,300 will be provided to the National Lotteries Association. Not National Lotteries Authority. Mr. Speaker, you can well imagine me being a bit perplexed with that allocation to the NLA, Mr. Speaker, because only Tuesday gone, we came to Parliament to approve a guarantee of $80 million 
for the NLA, of which, Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Finance made a point that the government will not be paying that debt. It is only a guarantee. No, you made, you made that point. I'm, everything I say is the truth, you know. Yeah. You, 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 as you said, you, 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 you'll come for me. You said you'll come for me. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, so that really, it, it's Mr. Deputy Speaker, and he comes with his, <laughs> comes with his own style, as you said. But please don't stop. <laughs> but Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, you can well imagine my, my, me being perplexed, Mr. Speaker, because, um, and I'm hoping that the Honorable Prime Minister would explain that $1.8 million that is being given as a grant to the NLA, considering what, what has just happened, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, uh, and I think I, I have the, based on what the guarantee is, NLA will be paying something like $3,571,993 biannually, about $7, $7 million a year. And we are providing them with one eight one three three hundred. So it's a concern, and I'm sure you can well appreciate my concern. So um, I, I, I do await clarification. And Mr. Speaker, since I'm on sports facilities, I turn your attention to page six. 659, Mr. Speaker. 659, head 56, line 0528, rehabilitation of the George Audlam Stadium under estimated project costs, total cost $2,500,000, and the government intends to raise bonds to rehabilitate the George Audlam Stadium. Again, Mr. Deputy Speaker, you can imagine my eyebrow being raised because we are aware that we did receive a loan from the Saudis for $200 million, part of which would have gone to, the member would explain to me when he, when he, when he rebuts. But it is a concern that $2.5 million would be allocated and would be raised by bonds when we just, um, you know, because what, 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 what to me, Mr. Speaker, uh, the question is, you know, how much would go to St. Jude's and how much to George Odlam Stadium? Mr. Speaker, I move quickly to Uh, no, Mr. Speaker, I think I should also, I think I should also mention that I also identified, I also identified that one of the funding sources for our rehabilitation of sports facilities, page, page 666, what a number. Page 666, line 54. 666. Rehabilitation of sports facilities from the Republic of China and Taiwan. We're getting $1,850,000, Mr. Speaker. I, 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 I'm wondering, you know, Mr. Speaker, considering that significant amount that we we're, were supposed to be getting um, from the NLA of 80 million that, um, you know, that that would have taken care of signif a significant portion of our playing fields island-wide as, as, the, as the deputy speaker, well, as a parliamentary rep for Vuford South indicated, um, where is Vuford share? And um, I, 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 I was pleased to see that you'd be getting an entertainment center. Um, um, the member for Beaufort South, and um, I am not sure if that is related to a sporting facility or, 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 or something else, Mr. Speaker. But, 
But Mr. Speaker, my concern is, in addition to the $80 million, we have another 1.8, and I'm really hoping that the member for Grosile would address the issue of the lights on the Lafargue playing field with all of that, all of that money that he's, he's receiving, Mr. Speaker, and also to address some of the challenges that the sportsmen and women face from, our, from some of our fields, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to speak on um, community inter in in intervention. Mr. Speaker, um, I have always boasted that the community of Chosel Salty Bus by far is the most pristine community in St. Lucia. In recent times, I've heard the member for Barbono and the member for Sufre try to take that position. But we know what we know, Mr. Speaker. Um, and I have, I have also said that many men and women around this table have strong roots in the community of Chosel Salty Bus. So I'm sure they will jealously guard, you know, that, 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 that position that I'm taking, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I note in the community there's a, 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 an uptake of Airbnb, and, and we will speak a lot more to that in the, um, a, when, when we discuss policy, Mr. Speaker. But I raise that because from a community tourism perspective, Mr. Speaker, I would really like to see you know, the, the intervention from the ministry in doing various things in the community. There's quite a bit of money going into community tourism, and um, maybe um, it's not shows us all of us turn yet, Mr. Speaker, but we need to, what they, as they say, Mr. Speaker, um, strike while the iron is hot. And Mr. Speaker, I am really looking for, you know, for our fair share. Um, the member for Denry North, Mr. Speaker, makes it a point at almost every parliamentary sitting to speak to the fact that he did not get a bag of cement to do any work in his constituency. And he has every right, Mr. Speaker, as a parliamentary speaker, to, to speak to that, Mr. Speaker. But as I said, Mr. Speaker, yes, well, no, but in particular, the member for Denry North and, uh, has been very, very loud. And, and, and even now in government, he still goes back there. Yes, you know, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. So, Mr. Speaker, as I have said to the member for, for Denry North, what is wrong is wrong. And the six members opposite at the time, the six members who were in opposition at the time, they all agreed on one thing, that it was wrong. They all agreed that it was wrong, Mr. Speaker. And if it is wrong, but you know, and I was just telling the, the, the member for, for, for Mikud for Nof, Mr. Speaker, all of us, all of us in this, as a member of cabinet, have signed what is a code of secrecy. Nobody knows what's happened in the, in the chambers of cabinet. Nobody. Because when we come here, Mr. Speaker, we are all one. And I, I will not believe, I will never believe, Mr. Speaker, that members on the opposite side do not have their fights with the Prime Minister on various issues. So but you but so never come here and talk about it. You never come here and talk about it, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, so, Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, 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 Mr. Speaker, matters of cabinet happen to be leaked. Unfortunately, but that's for another show, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I am getting, I am getting, a kakada. I am getting a kakada. And Mr. Speaker, I am making most, the most of the kakada that I'm getting. So Mr. Speaker, in collaboration with the Ministry of Infrastructure, because I always, I always try to incorporate the relevant authorities in any work that I do. And in collaboration Member with the Ministry of Member Infrastructure. Member for you have 15 minutes oh, I'll, be, I'll be finished with it that time, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Say that again, remember? <laughs> Even my time, the member wants to take <laughs> Mr. Speaker, and so under the CDB, Mr. Speaker, I have identified two particular areas where we have seen quite a bit of vehicles falling into what is considered to be very steep gutters, Mr. Speaker. And so in slabbing these drains, Mr. Speaker, we have widened the road. Okay, 
and the residents who have had to wake up at all hours of the night to save people from that, Mr. Speaker. Thankfully, Mr. Speaker, we've been able to resolve that problem. I'm also very grateful, Mr. Speaker, and give thanks in all things, give thanks in all things, Mr. Speaker. I'm not a hypocrite, you know, that's one thing, I'm not a hypocrite. I'll give thanks, Mr. Speaker, because the Prime Minister made an adjustment that a portion of that CDP could have gone to social services, Mr. Speaker. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, in my community, the issue of medical assistance is huge. It's big, Mr. Speaker. It is, it, it, it is you know, Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, I feel for you, no? I feel for you. I feel for you. I feel for you. If I didn't feel for you, I would have, take, I would have tackled you a different way. Okay? Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, and I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, um, and, and I notice allocations for the beginning of the whole universal health care um, thrust, Mr. Speaker, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, we, 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 you know under the last administration, we kick-started this, Mr. Speaker, and I'm really hoping that you can see it accelerated because, you know, I think too many of our people are dying from the lack of uh, or the inability, Mr. Speaker, to um, obtain, you know, relevant um, care at our various medical facilities and also private practices because our medical facilities cannot provide all of the, you know, um, services that are needed. Mr. Speaker, I will also admit that um, there has been some input to assisting people who live in extremely deplorable situations in the community and um, people are extremely grateful for that Mr. Speaker and I want to thank the government you know for that assistance Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker there's a lot more to be said on my community and I can assure you when we come to debating the, um, the, the appropriation bill a lot more will be said as it relates to interventions in my in my community but to close off mr speaker if i look across the road i notice the member for denry now with a number of little books and i'm wondering if you could assist me mr speaker by giving me two of, two of them mr speaker so mr. speaker that being said i thank you i thank you for your indulgence thank you mr. Member for Castries North. Mr. Speaker, at the end, <laughs> thank you. At the end of this term of office, this session of Parliament, one of us in this chamber will walk home with the trophy for having the record of having walked out of this house more than anyone else in 40 to 50 years. 
more than Johnny Walker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I have been here, I have been here, Mr. Speaker, from 1987 with a break of nine years. I have never walked out of this chamber, never. I have seen other members walk out in my time, but for purpose, for purpose, to demonstrate a point and to show that as a consequence of their position, they're walking out. But there's one member inside here, Mr. Walk Mr. Speaker, Mr. Walker. <laughs> Mr. Walker walks out every time certain members stand up to speak in this parliament. And so it's the demonstration of an individual and I remember one member in the last sitting said, Shinya Popot. <laughs> it's a demonstration of an individual who doesn't have the gonads to sit here and debate like a mature man and take his blues when the blues come. So he can come back. I saw a, a photo this afternoon, Mr. Speaker, of a garbage truck with a man sitting in the back of it heading to their group. So they try all kinds of things. They're in, they're out, they're heading all over the place to gain prominence, to gain ac acceptance. But this government, Mr. Speaker, that I belong to, that I am proud that I took a decision to come not to this side, will not, will never, ever in this term reduce itself to the nonsense that I see here. Mr. Speaker, we have come today to be debate the motion on the estimates of expenditure for the year 2024-25. Mr. Speaker, when the Prime Minister made his presentation, he very graciously presented the estimates and highlighted all of the areas of performances, challenges, achievements, and of course vision. Of course, you know, we've heard before certain members saying, well, I need to see your speech. But Mr. Speaker, what we're debating here is the motion not a speech presented by the Prime Minister. What we are debating here is this. That is what we are debating. Not the manner in which the presentation is crafted in the use of language. It is what is inside here to be able to sit down diligently and go through the estimates. And if you don't understand, get somebody to, to at, least, at least show you what to do or to get you to understand. And so, Mr. Speaker, what we have come here to do is to debate those figures. Those figures, Mr. Speaker, then will be reflected in policy at a later date when it is presented on the 23rd of April for debate among the members of this Honorable House. And so, Mr. Speaker, I stand with much dignity, pride, and conviction in supporting the motion before us here today, in supporting that motion to approve the, uh, the amount 1.8, where's the figure? 1.82, to approve the amount of 1.894, 110,800 EC dollars as the, ex, um, the revenue estimates of revenue and expenditure for the financial year 2024-2025. But Mr. Speaker, before proceeding in that direction and to deal with the section which pertains to the portfolios that I hold, I believe it is necessary, Mr. Speaker, for me to have a kind of review of where we came from and where we are today. Mr. Speaker, in the 
current financial year, which is coming to an end, I stand here proudly to reflect on some of the achievements of the Department of Infrastructure, particularly the Department of Infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, notwithstanding weather conditions, notwithstanding some of the elements highlighted by the parliamentary representative for Grosley in terms of the volume of vehicles now on our roads, the axle weight of vehicles, the, the damage that they do to our, our communities, etc., etc. Notwithstanding all of those challenges, Mr. Speaker, Notwithstanding the burdens left behind for us to undertake in payment of debt, this government, Mr. Speaker, under the brilliant stewardship of the Honorable Philip Joseph Peer, we have been able to achieve, Mr. Speaker, quite a number of Member for Castries East, when you, Member for Castries North, yes, sir. when you're referring to the member in this house, oh, sorry, you Mr. refer Speaker. to him not by name. Yes, the Member for Castries East. East. Yes. My apologies, sir. You see, I'm so passionate about the quality of leadership that the gentleman presents. I have to sometimes misstep and to refer him by name. Because, Mr. Speaker, he's a man of honor, a man of dignity, a man when he speaks, you can take his word and go to the bank with him. That is the man who sits over there, Mr. Speaker. Not like those who say something. And you know, when it lands in the courthouse, they say of strangers to the truth. This man is a man of his word. So, Mr. Speaker, I apologize for my misstep. And so, Mr. Speaker, when I look back and I scan through the work that we have done in this term, we have undertaken, apart from our normal potholing works, Mr. Speaker, we have done works to begin with in Zone 1. We have done works in terms of the reconstruction of the Pigeon Island Causeway Road the Grosley Cap Estate Road, the Jerome Montout Drive, and Beau and later on I'll give some details about Beau in Grosley. In Zone 5A, we have done work in Opicon, New Connection, Opicon Loop Gap, or Gap Loop, Opicon Playing Field, Opicon to the Main Road, Opicon Capesh, Bellevue, VSL, VSL, VLV, what's it? Oh, V, it's spelled wrongly here. VSL, Belvi Perino Lane, Belvi Aldonza Lane, and Belvi Aldonza Lane Connection. In Grace, Asukaye, Grace, Tierve, Vaughan. Zone 7, Marigo. Marigo, Mr. Speaker, it was done. And Marigo is one of those roads which was on a program and removed, instructed to remove it. This government did it, Mr. Speaker. Bar Saint Joseph again was on the program, removed. This program was done. Bar Saint Joseph, I'm coming to Marshall. Okay. Answer a Venus Road. This government did it, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Jonas Road, this government did it, Mr. Speaker. And we go to Castries East, Mr. Speaker. Marshall Road, which was on the program. Directives are given to delay it. This government did the Marshall Main Road. In addition, within the same Castries East, Boboville, Wavin Tutel, Tourouge, Bocage. And in VG, Mr. Speaker, in Castries North, the VG road was done through the community of VG. This government did all of those roads, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, and I'm not talking about roads to be built, you know, Mr. Speaker. I'm not speaking about roads to be, to, to be reconstructed or rehabilitated. I'm speaking of roads which have already been done by this administration. So when those empty drums are rolling down the road, making noise, with nothing you can have a beat to. You know, people generally beat a move, make a shake a leg once a drum beats. But those empty drums, when they roll, Mr. Speaker, there's no beat. While those empty drums were rolling down the street, Mr. Speaker, this government of the St. Lucia Labour Party did all of those roads. 
Mr. Speaker, we did and we are in presently undergoing the construction of the Austin Hill Denry North Road. Austin Hill. Austin Hill. Mr. Speaker. The Kazamba Road. And I think it was the member for Grosley, Grosley who indicated for 30 years the Kazamba Road was not attended to. This government has done the Kazaba Road. Revere Mitchell Bridge, Mr. Speaker, for years under, 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 under surveillance, no resources to do it. This term, it is being done by this government, the Kasamba Bridge. Okay, Kasamba Road. Revere Mitchell Bridge, sorry. St. Jude Highway, Mr. Speaker. And I join the parliamentary representative for VA4 North. Because when the instruction was given to St. Jude Highway, Viewfort view South, when the, um, the instruction was given to the parliamentary representative, to the, to the engineers to get Viewfort, uh, the St. Jude Highway done, it fell short of what should have happened. This term, we come in and get it done. But we did St. Jude to the Larissus jun Junction, and we're coming back to do the Larissus Junction all the way to the Viewfort Highway go, uh, going into Labry. Major Mel, Mr. Speaker. Major Mel. That road is presently under construction, Mr. Speaker. The Major Mel Road. We are looking, Mr. Speaker, hopefully, to do the Cartier Road and to continue, to continue, Mr. Speaker, the mission and the vision of this government of serving its people in reality, in reality. So Mr. Speaker, these are but some. These are but some, Mr. Speaker, because even while we can boast of those roads which, were, which have been newly constructed, there are communities where we have gone in and we have done road maintenance. In fact, recently the member for for Castries South was commending me on work done in Cicero in a place called Seaview. And that and the, also the my colleague to my right, the parliamentary rep for Miku North, who also commended me on the work which was done there. <laughs> but Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, when I speak of the challenges, let me give you an indication of one challenge. And the member for Grosley put it in a particular way. He said, we came in and we left with the burden of servicing debt. So the former administration went on the merry way and got loans to build road and then the debt was left behind. This prime minister has come here today and has said, that we accept the debt, but we this year will pay part of that debt up front to give us the fiscal space to be able to undertake in a more aggressive manner, a more organized manner, some of the other roads which need attention. Mr. Speaker, in last year's estimates of expenditure, there was an amount approved estimate of $109 million which appeared on the books. In the eyes of those who read, they would think, wow, what a sum of money that the Ministry of Infrastructure has been given to undertake roads. But in that amount, Mr. Speaker, an amount of $29,775,780 was ring-fenced as monies to repay the debt incurred by the former administration. Now, I am, not saying, I am not saying that governments should distinct themselves from one administration to the other, because we all say that we must continue the work of government. But do not make it to appear as if, well, hey, this government has come in, they have done nothing, they have not shown any interest in what we are doing. We have maintained our commitment, and we are saying this year, apart from fulfilling our commitment of last year, of paying the debt, this year we are saying, we will not pay the debt in arrears, we are paying it ahead of time. And that is what the PM is saying, so that it gives us more fiscal space 
to be able to undertake the work that has been presented to us um, in this fiscal year. But Mr. Speaker, I'll go back a little later to a few others as I make my presentation. But Mr. Speaker, the Department of Infrastructure. In the recurrent, Mr. Speaker, you'd recognize that head 43, an amount of 43 million 687 thousand five hundred dollars has been allocated and that is for the purpose of recurrent expenditure which include wages and, and salaries etc and other commitments normally which occur on a monthly basis the capital expenditure include 68 million six hundred and thirty four thousand eight hundred dollars mr speaker the fiscal year, Mr. Speaker, 2024-25, has been declared by the Prime Minister, Minister for Finance, as the year of infrastructure. The Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport, coincidentally, has just completed a strategic plan dubbed Infrastructure 2030. I'll come back to this. Mr. Speaker, when you listen to the presentation made by the Prime Minister, when he speaks about infrastructure, when I speak about infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, we're not simply speaking about roads or bridges or culverts or drains, as the Rep. Schwazel said, large drains that vehicles are falling in. We're not just speaking about those necessities. These are necessities in infrastructure. But we are speaking about infrastructure, what I call globally, Infrastructure in as far as our education infrastructure is concerned. Infrastructure as far as health is concerned. Infrastructure as far as sports is concerned. Infrastructure as far as agriculture is concerned because we also have to put in the infra necessary infrastructure of roads, security, and even, Mr. Speaker, um, technology. So we speak of infrastructure, infrastructure in technology, advancing our technology, public utilities in terms of water, electricity, energy, all of these, Mr. Speaker, form part of what we call the infrastructure. Apart from that, Mr. Speaker, we are also speaking about infrastructure to underpin some of the other sectors, to underpin tourism. What is the country going to be like as we move forward? What kind of infrastructure do we need? What infrastructure must we put in place as we continue to develop the country? As we speak, Mr. Mr. Speaker, we have experienced for some time in the last few months a series of shutdown in the water sector. What is said, Mr. Speaker, is that the infrastructure is deteriorating. The water infrastructure is de deteriorating. And so we can no longer sit back and wait for a busted line to repair. We need now to put a strategic plan in place to, to ensure that we prepare for the future. As the Minister for Tourism, with his ambitious plans to, to develop the tourism sector and to invite you know, um, investors of caliber, of, of integrity and quality, we need to also ensure that we put the infrastructure to underpin the tourism sector. And this goes back to what I, what I said early on. The question of the strategic plan that we in the Ministry of Infrastructure has just completed and hopefully will be launched. That is Infrastructure 2030. What it is, Mr. Speaker, it is a program that entails the infrastructure as we speak about infra Department of Infrastructure. But it deals with infrastructure in ports, in transport, telecommunications, public utilities, etc., etc and to look at the infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, and to develop a, 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 a policy plan, a, 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 a policy plan, a, a scientific plan, a strategic plan, Mr. Speaker, that will take us to the, to the threshold of our development in 2030. So in other words, Mr. Speaker, we at this point in 2023 must erase the deficit in infrastructure in any part of infrastructure. And I must admit, Mr. Speaker, from day one, when I mentioned this initiative of Infrastructure 2030, though the Prime Minister, upon the first announcement, smiled, 
he has demonstrated his understanding and has underpinned the initiative, the, the idea or the vision with what I call the practical aspect of it this year of doing the things that are needed to do in the area of infrastructure for the country. But Mr. Speaker, what this means is a Prime Minister of discipline, a Prime Minister of understanding, a Prime Minister who understands what it is to make commitments to the development of the country and to make the necessary sacrifices when it is needed. So when Mr. Speaker last year the Prime Minister said, this year will be the year for, for security and health. And he introduced the 2.5% health and security levy. What the Prime Minister was saying, listen, I understand the problem in the country. I understand the situation of, of, of security and crime, etc. I understand the challenges of health with the wastage that took place at St. Jude and all of the challenges in the health sector. And I am saying we all have to make a sacrifice and make a contribution of 2.5%. And that was a brave Prime Minister doing that. Not going around and making people believe that you can give them state-of-the-art facilities, but saying we all must make a small contribution of 2.5% towards the development of the infrastructure of our country, towards the development of our health sector, and the development of our security in this country. And so, Mr. Speaker, Infrastructure 2030 outlines the direction that the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport will take over the next seven years. The primary purpose of Infrastructure 2030, which I shall elaborate further in the policy statement, is to ensure that there is alignment with the broader national development goals of the country and that infrastructure plays a major role in the sustainable growth and development of the country, resulting in improved welfare to the citizens of our country. So it's more than just a physical infrastructure. It's about, it's about legislation, looking at our policies, reviewing our legislation. And speaking of legislation, the Works and Roads Act, which is a 1957 piece of legislation which governs the Department of Infrastructure, is archaic. And when you look at some of the penalties in that piece of legislation, they speak of shillings and pence and these sort of things. And so we need to look at our policies, review our policies, strengthen them, look at legislation, and make sure they're keeping up with, um, with um, the times. And therefore, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the 2024-25 estimates of expenditure intends to commence paving the way to infrastructure 2030. This fiscal year, Mr. Speaker, the, the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport will undertake extensive roads and bridges rehabilitation. The DIPT, Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport, has an intense work program for the fiscal year. However, the department is always challenged by climate change, which I mentioned early on, with increased rainfall, which continues to severely impact the existing infrastructure. And this is quite evident. You drive the streets, it rains, and suddenly the next day you see potholes all over because the, the road is fatigued, it is stressed, and therefore it ravels. And so you have, um, uh, you have um, potholes uh, appearing. Mr. Speaker, the completion of the Millennium Highway and West Coast Road reconstruction, as well as the rehabilitation of the Sir Julian R. Hunt Highway and the reconstruction of the Shock Bridge will be major improvements in our road infrastructure, which will also contribute to smoother con connectivity. Mr. Speaker, that is a must. Our quest in obtaining energy independence by, purchasing geo by pursuing geothermal exploration through our renewable energy, um, renewable energy Sector Development Project, RESDP, continues this fiscal year with the commencement of drilling activities in Sufre and surrounding communities. Some of the major projects that are to be undertaken and funded under this program, or are funded this year, one, Millennium and West Coast Road Reconstruction Program, rehabilitation of the Sir Julian Arhant uh, Highway, reconstruction of Shock Bridge, Cassius East Road and Drainage pro pro uh, Project, reconstruction and rehabilitation of major roads and renewable e energy sector development project. Mr. Speaker, if I'm to refer to Head 43, 
department head, 43 page 631 on the capital. Millennium Highway West Coast Road is one which we have been speaking about from time. I have become frustrated, the Prime Minister has become frustrated, and the government itself is frustrated. This project is financed from the Caribbean Development Bank, the United Kingdom Caribbean Infrastructure Partnership Fund, with counterpart funding from the government of St. Lucia. The project cost is $154,310,439, comprising UKCIF $95 million, 560, CDB $17,578,453. The objective of this project, Mr. Speaker, is to improve the condition of the Millennium Highway and 24.6 kilometers of West Coast Road, primary road network from Anslowy to Soufret. Mr. Speaker, this project, which was initiated in 2015 under the leadership of the former Prime Minister, member for Viewfort South, during the the tenure of Prime Minister Tony um, Cameron, it's all, not Tony Cameron, Prime Minister um, Cameron of the United Kingdom, David Cameron of the United Kingdom in 2015, sought to develop projects in the Caribbean that will help improve our social and economic standard, standing to be able to, to, to stand head and shoulders to other countries. Mr. Speaker, Lot 1, which is the Millennium Highway, which is Millennium Highway to Cul-de-Sac Roundabout, which has given us a lot of problems, is identified as a section, as we all know, from Latok to Cul-de-Sac. Then you have lot, and that lot, Mr. Speaker, the 18 months contract, which commenced on August 19, 2021, has a past completion date. However, work continues on the site with some significant progress in recent times. Though the contractor has been tardy in completing the project, there are a number of factors that have negatively affected the progress, among which are the um, unprecedented weather patterns, unavailability of materials, and theft on the project site. Lot 2B, Mr. Speaker, and I heard someone laughing, Mr. Speaker, and let me indicate that there have been a number of incidents, Mr. Speaker, of entry into the compound, theft of a number of tools and equipment affecting, affecting the, the contractor. This is not my information, beg your pardon? In and out of the compound, in and out of the compound. This is not my creation. I am not in the habit of crafting lies. I'm in the habit of speaking the truth. And so I am speaking the truth as given to me by the technocrats who are supervising. Mr. Speaker, Lot 2B, construction of the Ansari Bridge. The contract was awarded to OB Sadu Engineering Services Limited and works commence on January 8, 2024. The project was delayed due to the contractor not gaining access to the site as a result of challenges experienced in relocating the project affected persons. Mr. Speaker, a number of people who had to be re re relocated. I move quickly, Mr. Speaker, on to the West Coast, the cul-de-sac bridge to Ansari Bridge, Ansari Bridge to Canaries, and Canaries to Sufra Bridge. The contract has been awarded to Namalco Construction Services Limited, a company out of the island of Trinidad and Tobago. Works has commenced on Lot 2A, with the construction of retaining structures and drainage and sidewalks along the road to be um, reconstructed. Mr. Speaker, Project Head 0456, page 631, slope stabilization, retaining walls, etc. An amount of $1.5 million has been allocation, allocated, with, and that will be utilized to undertake repairs of slope failures that currently exist and have not been addressed within various constituencies on the island. And there is a list of constituencies where we have identified those, um, those failures uh, for us to undertake works. Reconstruction of retaining wall at Itangs, a cost of $600,000, and I have promised the parliamentary rep 
for Sufre of our commitment to do it, and it is, on, it is in the estimates. We have already commenced the process of procurement, uh, interviewing potential contractors through the Public Procurement Board, and I believe by the time we are through with this session of the, this um, element of the debate, of, of the process, we will have uh, um, some serious work to be done. That slope um, collapsed during Hurricane Elsa in 2022, and we're well on the way to completing it. Other retaining walls, slope stabilization will be undertaken island-wide at the various, within the various constituencies. Project head 0102, page 631. Reconstruction and rehabilitation of roads, $2.001 million. This allocation will facilitate road and drainage repairs along the primary and secondary road island-wide um, to bring relief to our people. And this, Mr. Speaker, may I say, is really what I call the normal program of the department. So where you have reconstruction, rehabilitation, that is the program of the ministry every year. Where you have slope stabilization, that is the program of the ministry which happens every year. The actual program for Infrastructure 24 will be a separate program that will be launched in time to come in terms of announcing to the nation the, those projects that will be undertaken. But as we speak, Mr. Speaker, we have already started that infrastructure 2021, 2024, within the resources of the department. So if you were to drive on the Larissus Road, you will see a segment of that road being reconstructed, reconstructed as part of a strategy to, strategy to save the East Coast Road. So if you drive along the East Coast Road, you'll notice that there are some parts that are very good and some parts that are very bad. One section that was very bad is that of the Larissus Road. So that road is being reconstructed and we are reconstructing it to a standard above what we have done ever before. So you'll see a wider carriageway, you'll see the shoulders are, are, are wider and it presents room for, for getting off the, the, the carriageway and also when it is marked and the delineators are put on the road, it will make driving at nights much easier. Because not only would you rely on just the white markers, but what you'll see are those what we call, some people call it um, reflectors. They are really delineators. So they will be placed there. And so we are hoping that we can continue that exercise, save the road, because if we are to undertake the construction of the East Coast Road, Mr. Speaker, the cost of that entire road from Viewfort all the way through to the Badlil is about 125 million EC dollars. That's a major investment. And so for us, it is better to save the road than to believe that we can do it to impress people. We, I think we have to be prudent about our spending. We have to be clinical in all that we do. The reconstruction, sorry, rivers and water course ma maintenance, Mr. Speaker, this is a program that we have continuously undertaken of what we call the silting and uh, maintaining our water courses. But I'm sure that our, the parliamentary rep for Denry South would say that rivers are not always meant to be desilted because you interfere with the riverbed, you interfere with the hydraulics of that river, and so the, if you intensify the hydraulics of the river by desilting it, then it means that you're prone to more um, sl slides and more um, um, movement and erosion taking place along the river, river, bed, river course. So Mr. Speaker, that is river, rivers and water course maintenance. We then move, Mr. Speaker, to the shock bridge construction. This bridge, Mr. Speaker, that is head 0507, page 631, this bridge has been under constant pressure. During the Hurricane Thomas, there was some damage done. We were able to save the bridge, replace the material on, onto the Amco pipe, and to pave it and to, and to be able to keep it running. But over the years, what we have seen is the deterioration of the upper part of what we call the Amco pipe. It's, um, it's a, a cylindrical, galvanized um, structure. We have seen the deterioration taking place, and through inspection, it calls for reconstruction. And therefore, it is estimated that that bridge will cost some $3 million, for which we have already been able to source a supplier of the bridge 
to ensure that the bridge can be built within the shortest possible time with as little downtime as possible. It's a prefabricated bridge, not a Bailey bridge, but another, another um, design of bridge that you can lay down once you have the head walls in place, you can lay down in no time and get your roadway open sooner than later. Rehabilitation of Sir Julian R. Hunt Highway, Mr. Speaker. We have an allocation here of $8.34 million. I will leave that piece to the Prime Minister in his policy statement to elaborate as we are attempting to do a collaboration for which we have had some positive news coming out, a col collaboration which will include the Kuwaiti government, the, the CDB, and other financiers who will build that road from the Shock Bridge all the way to the Grosley Junction where the Cap Grosley Road ends. And that will itself enhance and bring what I call greater sensibility, Mr. Speaker, to the design and construction of that road. Mr. Speaker, we move on to head 0508, Castries East Road and Drainage Project. Okay, 0508, page 631, it reads Castries East Road and Drainage Project. Mr. Speaker, as we battle with traffic, as we attempt to manage our traffic, some of what we intend to do calls for improving what I call the secondary roads. So in the case of Grosley, where we intend to do the Grosley Road, total rehabilitation, it means that there are secondary roads which we must pay attention to. One of those roads in Grosley is the um, Vesiqui Nobe Corinth, Vesiqui Nobe into Asu Canal. <clears throat> we have done some work at Asu Canal recently, and I think the rep mentioned it. We still have some more work to do there, because what we are trying to do is to be able to divert traffic off the Castries Grosley Highway, particularly traffic intended to move to the east of the highway to go to Babuno, to get to Dame Pool at Rizzi School, to move on to Balata and to get over to Mondidon and into the valley. We believe if we can take that traffic out, then we can ease the congestion on the Castries Grosley Highway and allow the highway to breathe. So before we start the major works on the highway, in terms of building that four-lane highway, with some other measures that we intend to take, we are saying, let us go ahead and look at the VACQ road and to make it a more attractive road, a safer road and one that people will see as an alternative and probably a preference of a road to travel. So this will be done, Mr. Speaker. The works to be undertaken, in, on the other hand, will be at Bacatel, and that is what we refer to as the Cassius East Road and drainage. That road from Marsha, which many of us use when we're heading east or south, is a very efficient road once it is cleared but in some instances, they're bottlenecks. So what we want to do there in the first instance for $350,000 is to go in and improve the drainage system, slab the drains, and so to allow for two-way traffic without interruption. It means again that instead of congestion, congesting this, the city, what will happen is that persons heading south from north, once they hit the shock roundabout, they enter into Vidbutel onto Chaussee Road, hit the, the Marshall Road onto Bacatel and into the valley via Trapiton and into the Iglo. So Mr. Speaker, that is one of, that is the intention of this project. It includes the, um, the site clearance, the reconstruction of drains to include box drains and curb and slipper drains, installation of dog bones and slabbing of the, th of the, of the drain, construction and installation of reinforced concrete, drain, concrete drain covers and slabs. While we speak of this, Mr. Speaker, one of the projects which, we, I, which should have started this weekend and is already funded is the Marshall Entrance Enhancement Project. This project, Mr. Speaker, is to enhance Marsha as you enter Marsha, to make Marsha more appealing. So the government has already done the necessary groundwork in provide, um, producing a design that will enhance Marsha and present a grand entry to Marsha, the constituency of the Prime Minister of St. Lucia with dignity. 
Mr. Speaker, this is going to be a very exciting project. It, no longer for demonstration. <laughs> this is going to be a very exciting project, Mr. Speaker, and it will also attempt to address some of the issues of the navigation of the network of road between Waterworks Road, Marshall Road, Chelsea, and the Riverside Road. So probably in the whole redesign of that junction, we may be able to put in a roundabout there to allow that traffic to be able to flow around the roundabout, get into Marsha, coming from an acute angle onto the roundabout. So Marsha people will be happy, they'll be proud, and the Prime Minister has some, some other great ideas for the people of Marsha, who I'm sure today are proud people. And I must say, Mr. Speaker, you know, once upon a time, Marsha had a reputation. There were people who were scared to walk in Marsha. Today is no longer. Marsha is a place for safety. Marsha, you can walk there, nobody troubles you. The streets are clean, etc., etc. Some people thought that, that Marsha is a place for demonstration. So you ban them from demonstrating in castles and say, go and, do, go and demonstrate in Marsha. But Mr. Speaker, Marsha is a place which has dignity. And when you speak to the people of Marsha, the indigenous people of Marsha, Mr. Speaker, they have a lot of dignity. Mr. Speaker, supervision of major roadworks, proje um, project head 0024. Um, it's really an, an uh, head, Mr. Speaker, $625,000, and it is to provide project management supervision, road maintenance management systems. Mr. Speaker, one of the things that we have been criticized at the Ministry of the Department of Infrastructure is the quality of project management the ability of the department to manage project effectively, efficiently. And so the, um, what we're doing here, Mr. Speaker, is to strengthen the project management of, of the department in terms of procurement, technical services, to provide quality supervision and consultancy on major capital projects to be able to be more independent rather than depending on consultants in that regard. Mr. Speaker, this will make the, the department even more agile. One item, Mr. Speaker, that's in the estimates, project head 0505, page 61, Mr. Speaker, is road safety. $200,000, Mr. Speaker. This is the component of the government of St. Lucia. I'm sure, Mr. Speaker. Member for Castries North, you have 15 minutes left. Okay, Mr. Speaker, I'll try to rush through. Mr. Speaker, if you look around St. Lucia, you will see an intensification of street signs, traffic signs, an intensification of guardrails. You'll see, Mr. Speaker, that your pedestrian crossings are being painted more frequently. And hopefully, Mr. Speaker, the British government, under the UKCIF grant program, has factored into that project a road safety component that will take care of road safety throughout the country. And road safety is about education, Mr. Speaker. It's about introducing and in, um, installing street furniture. It's about putting in place traffic calming measures. So many times when you, fix, you build a road, immediately after people are saying, put speed bumps. Some people don't like the speed bumps. But there are other traffic calming measures that can be put in place, Mr. Speaker, to take care of the situation. I'll run through some other aspects of the estimates, Mr. Speaker. The question of planning and design unit. Mr. Speaker, for some time I've been indicating the need for a planning and design unit within the Department of Infrastructure. What happens? There's no planning and design unit. When a decision is take on, taken for a major project, Mr. Speaker, a consultancy is awarded to somebody to do the design, and etc., etc. We are saying, Mr. Speaker, the time has come to have a planning and design unit so that we can vision, we can vision where we are going. And once we have that vision, Mr. Speaker, we can begin to prepare the designs. And when the time comes for implementation, it's ready to go um, to be implemented. Upgrade of the materials laboratory, Mr. Speaker. Again, with our intention to improve quality, quality control, Mr. Speaker, we will be upgrading the materials lab so we can do better a testing of the quality of material that we use on the road. Too often people are saying a, road is, the, 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 a hole is patched and then the next thing the rain comes and it un, un, unravels. Mr. Speaker, this year the Taiwanese government has been approached to look and to collaborate with us 
in terms of one, strengthening our materials laboratory through technical cooperation, assisting us in road safety, etc., and, uh, and also giving us support in areas of traffic management, doing traffic management studies to be able to plan scientifically the issue of our traffic in this, in this country. Maintenance of government buildings, Mr. Speaker, the usual thing, $1.5 million. The union office complex, Mr. Speaker, there is some expenditure to, to be done in that area, considering that the government now has paid off that building, and there's some works to be done to um, enhance the, the environment. The Denry Me Mechanical Workshop, Mr. Speaker, we are strengthening the Denry Me Mechanical Workshop so as to be able to better service the public service fleet of vehicles. Government House, Mr. Speaker, it's an old facility, an old building, and so we are habilitation of the fencing, there's the replacement of, an, of a generator, and the habilitation of a section of the road to Government House. Prime Minister's residence, Mr. Speaker, well, of course, we, one effort was made some time ago to do some repairs to the, the residence, but instead a whole block was demolished. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, an allocation of $431,200 has been allocated to deal with the roof, upgrade of surveillance system, and the erection of chain link fence around the property. Then, Mr. Speaker, we have disaster vulnerability resilience recovery and that pertains to bridges and culverts, which I've spoken about extensively. That, uh, Mr. Speaker, will be dealt with during this year under that head $500,000. Head 22, Mr. Speaker, reconstruction of bridges, the cul-de-sac bridge. There is still a final amount to be paid of $400,000 EC dollars, Mr. Speaker, to conclude that, that um, project and to connect the bridge with the Millennium Highway and West Coast Road. Sustainable energy sector development project, Mr. Speaker, I will deal with that extensively in the policy statement so as to give a full understanding of what we are doing, how we intend to proceed in terms of legislation, policy legislation, etc., and the intention of the government as far as renewable energy is concerned. Electricity supply bill, Mr. Speaker, the national energy policy has been completed and approved by the Cabinet of Ministers and will be widely disseminated and then the, the modern legislation will be sent to Cabinet for some onward transmission to Parliament. There has been some, in, in, um, some increase in recurrent expenditure, Mr. Speaker, and these are trivial, but it pertains to lab the laboratory un unit in bringing in more officers, um, the chief engineer's office, in other words, capacity building in a number of those offices, including the buildings and grounds unit, improving their, um, their capacity. I want to quickly just um, mention, Mr. Speaker, in closing, just a few other matters, one of them being the division of telecommunications, the telecommunications unit. There's a provision for $400,000, a provision for digital telecommunication subsidy. What that is, Mr. Speaker, this government, uh, two years ago, in conjunction with Flo, we were able to negotiate at a very concessionary rate a program called the Home um, Communication Bundle, in which we were able 5,000 St. Lucian families under the threshold who cannot afford to, to have connectivity, internet connectivity, we're able to help them out. Digicel has now come forward to the government and I said, listen, we would like to do the same thing. And they have also been negotiating a very um, concessionary rate with us and the government's contribution on an annual basis will be just $400,000. Now that is not going to be coming directly out of the government's coffers. Because under the arrangements of the NTRC and, the, and ECTEL, every year the government is able to get what they call a surplus out of the budget of ECTEL, which comes to the government and that can be used for such programs as these to provide to the underprivileged, the people, the people who we serve, the people who we care, to help them get um, the kind of services that they're looking at. I just want to um, gloss through, Mr. Speaker, how much time do I have? Five? Eight minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll try to run through this. 
the land registry, Mr. Speaker, which is within the Department of Physical Development, has been a major problem, Mr. Speaker. We have undertaken to do a number of changes there and to try and see how we can enhance the efficiency of the department. We are now at the, at the, at the juncture where we are speaking to the World Bank to digitize the, the land registry. And I think that is so important because what it means, Mr. Speaker, if we are able to digitize the land registry, it means that the information that we sit there on, that we waste so much time for people to stand outside and to find, take the line and to get in there, we can enhance the program in such a way that, you know, the lawyers, for example, from the office on a desktop can log into the system, get the information without being able to compromise the information and to make the application for whatever it is they're looking for and get it within a very short space of time. That will call for training of the staff, some kind of um, also movement of staff too. But we're working on this, Mr. Speaker, and that in also includes one expansion of the vault and the investment in the program um, that um, the World Bank is funding. Part of our contribution is $115,313. We, con we constantly do um, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning um, system improvements, and that will cost $223,000, what we call the HVAC. Um, then we also have the library square market, which is probably our bigger, well, the main project for, for the department at this time, library square and market rehabilitation. That project this year, it's going to be $1.5 million in grant and $1.329 million in bonds. The project has already started, and we're hoping that very soon we will complete it. Land administration, Mr. Speaker, it's a major um, problem. It's a vexing issue where the government for decades have acquired persons' private property, and when the time comes to payment, we are unable to pay or we just refuse to pay them. This government this year made a tremendous mark in not just allocating resources for payment to landowners, but what we have been able to do is actually pay the landowners. We have spent this year well over $4 million in paying persons for the lands. So what we have decided, Mr. Speaker, is to have a land administration system where we will look at the lands which have been acquired over the years and ask ourselves, do we really need those lands? If we do not need the lands, let us give it back and just pay them the interest and save our money. We also believe, Mr. Speaker, that we need to look and at this. You have five minutes left. Five minutes left, Mr. Speaker. I want to say that we are looking at the issue of land administration, that when we undertake projects, that the cost of acquisition must be factored into the cost of the project. So it's not a situation where you say, well, the acquisition of the land is $250,000, and we'll put it under the budget of the Ministry of Physical Development. It must be factored into the cost of the project, and so government must get the money up front so as to pay the owners of the land. I shall go into even greater detail, Mr. Speaker, um, during the policy statement and to address a number of other issues which today I have not been able to deal with. One issue I just want to mention, I forgot when I was discussing the issue of the, of the Julian Arant Highway, is some soft measures that we intend to take, and we, um, we should have started on Tuesday, um, I think there were some delays, and that is how do we temper, how do we calm the traffic along that highway? Particularly in the zone, the northern zone, north, north, region, uh, north regional zone, and that is from the, the Rodney Bay Junction down to the, the Bois Bridge, that section between the Bois Bridge and, and um, SNS. And then as you go lower down that section from the Bois Bridge in the vicinity of the Orange Grove Plaza. Central Grove. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Speaker, we have come up with an initiative that has worked in other countries, and that is to design a roundabout that is not an island, as we call it, but a wrong, um, develop a roundabout that can either be just a culvert that has circles marked around it, and you adopt the philosophy or the practice of going around a roundabout. So if you have, a, 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 say, an 18-wheeler truck, which needs a little more space to maneuver the roundabout, the fact that it's just a, a culvert standing in, in that location, it means the truck can maneuver without having to ride the, 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 the pavement. And so we'll be doing the first one at the entrance of SNS. 
The other one will be done somewhere in the vicinity of the Badawans Bridge and the Orange Grove Plaza. But in the long term, we are hoping that what we can do is to put a roundabout smack in the middle of Orange Grove, Badawans Plaza, and the Galaxy Station, with a road going in between Badawans Plaza and Galaxy Station, a new bridge being established, and condemning the bridge by um, Computer World, which will mean now you can navigate a lot easily in that junction. So that is the longer term plan we are looking at, which would allow to manage the traffic a lot better. So Mr. Speaker, I have come to the end. I would have loved to mention a few things in my constituency which is ongoing, but we'll have some time. I want to thank the Minister for Sports for having committed to improving the Leclerc playing field. Leclerc now, Mr. Speaker, the Leclerc Football League, the Leclerc Football Team has moved, as he said, from the bottom of the ladder in second division got to semi-finals, uh, now the island champs. I've worked with them, Mr. Speaker, and I've done a lot under my CDP to develop the team, and every year I spend on the CDP $60,000 for the youth development program in football, and another $40,000 jointly with sponsors and CDP to provide the right coaching for the team. So this is what we need to do, Mr. Speaker, if we are to advance in sports in every sector. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you. I thought it necessary for me to highlight the Leclerc football team and the league for the work they are doing. The young people have formed themselves in a Cassius North Enterprise Development Institute called Synody. The last year before they did a youth expo, the year before they did a youth expo, last year they did an enterprise expo, and they're working, Mr. Speaker, to try and to maintain that kind of momentum in the constituency and to continue to develop the constituency. So I want to thank the Prime Minister for the opportunity he has given me to serve in his cabinet and the confidence that he has placed with me, the trust that he has developed in me, and my commitment to him as the leader and Prime Minister, and to say that I am here all the way to serve the people of this country who need the quality of service that this government has given them, a quality of service that is sincere, a quality of service that, is, that demonstrates commitment a quality of service that demonstrates conviction, and one of sincerity, and I want to associate myself with it and to say that this year's um, estimates of expenditure, capital, and recurrent certainly has my full support, and I look forward to the policy debate. I thank you. The member for Barbano. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the motion as presented by the Honorable Prime Minister of the estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2024-25 in the amount of one billion eight hundred and ninety four million one hundred and ten thousand eight hundred Eastern Caribbean dollars. Mr. Speaker, I have no idea what that amount of money means. I will not have it in my kitty and I will not sit close to it. <laughs> but it is for the people of St. Lucia to be distributed among all the citizens. But Mr. Speaker, 
Before I proceed in discussing the motion at hand, I want to take this opportunity to express gratitude. First of all, let me thank God for giving me the breath of life. And I'm still breathing, and I'm alive for a reason. And all of us in this house is alive for a reason. And we have to make good use of that opportunity the Lord has given us. I want to thank my husband who started that challenging journey with me all the way. I want to thank the doctors. And at the time, Mr. Speaker, it was like thinking on your feet. The doctors had tapped you. It was a last minute decision because I was on my way to OKEU. And then a diversion was made. And I want to thank Dr. Alwyn Benjamin, Dr. Christy Daniel, and some other doctors at Tapio and the nurses. Romel, oh, Romel Daniel, sorry. Uh -huh. I want to thank my family, my close friends. I want to thank the Honorable Prime Minister and my cabinet colleagues. I want to thank the doctors in Martinique, Dr. Dabo. I want to thank the Council General in Martinique, Council General Alison Joseph, and the Cultural Attaché, um, Mr. Shazi Shalom. And I want to thank my team in the ministry, the departments I headed, the constituents of Babono, the people of St. Lucia, and those in the diaspora. Mr. Speaker, I still believe that miracles do happen. And Mr. Speaker, I think my experience is one that I will share in a very profound way with my cabinet colleagues. And I think more and more I believe in the policies of this government with a 2.5% health and security levy, we never know who this government may save their lives. Not everybody may be fortunate to have an insurance or the health support. And I'm, I'm saying this, Mr. Speaker, because I know what I went through, and there are times government have to step in at least to allow you to step out. Even if you have insurance, you have finance, but somebody must step in to allow things to happen. And this is what the government did. They step in and asked me to move so that at the end of the day, whatever lives we can save in St. Lucia, we do it for every single citizen in this country. Mr. Speaker, I am happy today that I had to leave my, call myself out of sick leave, to be here to represent the people of Babono. Because nobody else would do that, because that is why they elected me. And I thank the Lord for giving me the breath of life and the strength to come here to speak on their behalf. I want to commend my colleague minister who is holding the fort while I'm on sick leave and I let him know that I was following him and he did a great job. I told him be careful when he walks on eggshells and he has done that very well Mr. Speaker. I want my colleagues to put your hands together for Honorable Jeremiah Nup. Mr. Speaker, as I look at the estimates of revenue and expenditure, I am even more comforted. I call this budget a budget that is realistic and practical. It is a budget that is based on the principles 
of sharing the pie for everyone to get. It also reinforces my concept of how this government functions. And I have defined it several times that this government is charged with the responsibility of distributing water, distributing the wealth or resources of this country. And there are two instruments if you are using water to water plants. You can use a hose or you can use a spraying can. And this budget is actually re-emphasizing the spraying can philosophy. What I know I saw happen during the last administration, they used the hose. And the hose only went to the roots of a few plants that got very big, as big as the massive tree we have in the Derek Walcott Square. But with the spraying can, Mr. Speaker, you give life to every single plant. And whatever the Prime Minister has allocated, Mr. Speaker, to the tune of $1.8 billion, is going to spread it out so that every single plant, every single person in this country can get a little something out of it. And I applaud the Prime Minister with his wisdom and sharing the pie for us to survive. Mr. Speaker, I want to take you quickly to what I promised the people of Babolo. And some people usually hold parliamentary reps responsible for a whole set of things. But we must never forget what we document and what we put in writing is what we owe the people. And I promised the people in Babolo that we would repurpose on youth space at the primary schools to increase access to early childhood education and adult education programs. And Mr. Speaker, when I listen to my colleague minister, um, colleague parliamentarian and minister, on the, the budget item, the estimates item number 52, that speaks to education, innovation, and vocational training. Mr. Speaker, I know that is one area where we have started benefiting in terms of early childhood education and we're getting ready for the adult education. Because, Mr. Speaker, the Barbado constituency benefited from a pre-K classroom which was implemented by the Ministry of Equity. And that is catering for early childhood education in Babolo. BNTF, yes. Right, we, we have a pre-K classroom in the Babolo Primary School through the BNTF, and that is fulfilling that promise. Mr. Speaker, I promise to establish a Babolo ecotourism project which will include turtle watching, outdoor camping, bird watching, and hike trails, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, if I go back quickly to the minutes item 46 in the estimates of revenue and heading 46, Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture, and Information. We are waiting patiently we are promised, I saw a little snippet in the summary that Babono was mentioned, and I'm sure this time around the ministry will come through to deliver some aspect of tourism. And Babono, Mr. Speaker, unlike other com constituencies, we have defined Babono as an agro, we go agro tourism, because agriculture is the foundation for livelihood for Babono people, and we will work around it with tourism to enhance economic activity for the people in the constituency of Babono. Mr. Speaker, provide Wi-Fi access across the communities in the constituency. And Mr. Speaker, we have started that process. 
where Barbudo Central has Wi-Fi, and there are a few other communities where Wi-Fi, the GI Net program, will be installed to provide Wi-Fi for the people. So I know this is coming on the, um, the ministry on the, my watch, which is public service. So we know I am delivering along those lines. Improve access to land under a land rationalization program for housing and agriculture. And Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Housing and Local Government has started delivering, especially in the land rationalization program where the people at Talvan were able to get land, those who occupied the land for over 30 years, they were able to get land to the tune of $2.50 a square foot. That's um, a, a remarkable um, achievement by this government and in fulfilling my promise to the constituents. And on the housing, Mr. Speaker, I am very pleased that a number of persons who are most in need in the constituency, um, we have item number, budget line for estimates 48, Ministry of Housing and Local Government, that we will see the work of housing continuing in the Babono constituency. And I am very pleased that we were able to take people out of some deplorable conditions in which they live. And we have improved that under the housing program. Mr. Speaker, I also promise to redevelop Babono Central with a view to improving access to the services provided by the Babono Multipurpose Center. And Mr. Speaker, that too falls on the local government and I know equity, Ministry of Equity also share part of that responsibility for human resource development centers. And we have a multipurpose center that has been in existence since 1987 and it needs some major works. So I'm depending heavily on the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of Finance to come to the rescue of the Babono people in this area. Mr. Speaker, as we look at the estimates of revenue and expenditure, I am putting all my colleague ministers on notice because what I have done during the past two and a half years is to hold a fort. And I've held a fort for them in a number of areas with the CDP contributions that come to the constituency. Every single ministry has gotten some activity going on under the CDP and some of the main ministries have also come forward to start some work. And Mr. Speaker, if I speak of work done in the Babolo constituency, I need to thank the Minister of Infrastructure for coming to our rescue, especially in the area of slope stabilization and potholing. However, we are waiting for our share of roads, Mr. Speaker. And our share of roads will start with one road we call the Asuba Road. This was a road that was started under the last administration. It was stopped and now it is a link road between Gara and Bogis. And once we open that road, Mr. Speaker, is going to make life a lot easier for the people at Gara and the people at Bogis that end up in a kind of what we call a, 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 a stop zone. There is no through road that can connect it. And once we connect that road, we will have traffic flowing throughout Babalu. Mr. Speaker, as I speak to infrastructure, we have what we call the Poidu Road. And that's a road that was neglected by the last administration, but it was a very good road. It's a necessary road to help the farmers in the Talvan area. And I did some work in that area through my CDP 
to bring some relief to the farmers and they are very grateful but I am encouraging and hoping that the Minister of Infrastructure will come to make it a more motorable road. We have the Lafitte Road in the Barbono Central area. This road, I did some work on it to make it motorable for the people, but we are hoping that Ministry of Infrastructure will help us complete that. Mr. Speaker, as we speak of roads, those of you who know Babono will understand there is a part of Babono where the road has not been developed. And these roads are critical for tourism and it's, they are critical for agriculture. And Mr. Speaker, I speak no other than the Mackey Road, where I did some work in the road to re give some relief to the farmers. But the Mackey Road is also a road for tourism. The ATV riders use that road very often. It is a, a package for tourism. And people explore St. Lucia looking for exciting places to visit. And this road there is serving that purpose. So here, infrastructure, agriculture, and tourism can come together to bring some relief. Mr. Speaker, I speak of the Grantons Road. And Grantons is a road that had never been addressed during the last 50 years. And Mr. Speaker, I was able to use some of the CDP funds to assist the farmers. It's a road that will serve tourism for turtle watching, bird watching, hiking. It is a road that will serve the farmers and it was interesting to know about 50% of the watermelons that are produced in St. Lucia is coming from that area. So Mr. Speaker, it, the, the, the farmers there, the, the, the ATV riders go into Grantons, all these are areas that need it. And Mr. Speaker, there are many other little roads, but notwithstanding that, I need to commend the Ministry of Infrastructure. Right now, as we speak, they are working on the Lacqua Hill. That hill has been a problem for years. Every two weeks, a pipe from Wasco bursts in that hill. And there was once the pipe burst and it actually pushed a vehicle, it has so much pressure, it pushed the vehicle down the hill. And right now as we speak, I drove there this afternoon and I saw they are resurfacing that road. I need to thank the Ministry of Infrastructure and Wasco for bringing great relief to the people in Babylon. Mr. Speaker, as we move quickly, we speak of housing and the housing repair program has been going on very well and I'm hoping that in the future plans of the Ministry of Local Government and Housing that we will get one of the high-rise buildings I saw going, that will be going up at Beauceju that will have a few in the Babono constituency because Babono is a rapidly growing constituency in that it, is find, it finds itself between Grosile and Castries. And because Babodo has so many outlets into Castries, it is becoming an area of great interest for residents. Mr. Speaker, agriculture. I have a passion for agriculture. And sometimes I said maybe that is why I challenged the last Minister of Agriculture and I had to debate what we do with agriculture. And Babono, the, the livelihood of the people in the constituency of Babono is agriculture. And therefore, I'm appealing to the Minister of Agriculture that in this um, budget item 41, that we will get support for the farmers. One, I think Minister of Infrastructure will assist with the roads, but we have issues of drainage and other issues. And during the course of last year, Mr. Speaker, from the CDP funds, I had to assist the farmers to give them some relief with regards to irrigation because the, the, the plants were dying, they could, the pumps, it was, and I gave them some fuel vouchers to assist them with irrigation. 
And I need to thank the Minister of Agriculture for providing the fertilizer for the farmers so that they can continue their production. And we have some new initiative. As we speak, Mr. Speaker, I am hoping that the agro-processing plant at Fawasaw, which was closed down or loaned out by the last administration, will be reopened to create outlet for the farmers to sell their produce. It is a very important component in terms of the high end of agricultural pro pro um, produce. So we want that agro-processing plant reopened to serve the people in the Babono constituency. Mr. Speaker, as we look at Ministry of Youth and Sports, line item 53, um, 54, like all other colleagues, I'm coming with my shopping list for youth development and sports. And as we speak of youth development and sports, Mr. Speaker, I don't want to compete with any other parliamentarian, but the records are straight that Babono has produced a young, strong cricketer in the persons of Kimani Melius. We have Lavon Spencer, who blazed the trail with all the challenges. Now we have seen Julian Alfred following at the top levels representing St. Lucia. We have Albert Reynolds in Javelin. And interestingly, we have an 85-year-old gentleman. I know he's a fan of Minister of Education, Parliamentary Rep for Den Reynolds, who, in, in fact, this year in May, he wants to do his last walk, which he's 85 years, and he walks around St. Lucia. He lives in my community, and he keeps my life miserable because he wants to put that on his, on his record. But he has walked around the island about four or five times, Mr. Speaker. So he has great endurance, and that's a lesson for all of us. But Mr. Speaker, as we speak on sports, we need to add some humor to the sporting. With the semi-professional league, Mr. Speaker, Babolo versus Masha was the first game in the semi-professional league. I'll not tell you who represents Marsha, <laughs> but Babolo won. Babolo won Marsha, and therefore the Prime Minister, the, represent, the parliamentary rep for Marsha, has promised to give Babolo greater support for having done such a wonderful job in competing. In, it doesn't matter, a goal, a goal is a goal. <laughs> So we are looking forward to a lot of support. And Mr. Speaker, as we speak on football, I have some clear records. There is a team in Fawasa called New Generation, Mr. Speaker. And that team, I understood, has been producing some of the top players in some of the football teams. So when I will bring out their parents' ID card, I will let you know where these players are from. But um, I know Minister of Sports step out. The gentleman that scored the goal for Grozile is from New Generation. So I did some homework and I think we just have to continue the team spirit, but we need support to give that team that is producing some of these top players in the Fawasa community. And Mr. Speaker, as I speak of Fawasa, we are actually working now in creating almost a little sporting village in the Fawasa community. By one, we have already done some work, we started some work on the refurbishment of the community center. We are actually building a toilet for spectators there and we have to do some major renovation to the seats and so on. So we are already taking the lead with the hope that the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will come to our rescue, looking at the figures in this estimates of revenue and expenditure. Mr. Speaker, as we 
deliberate on the estimates of revenue and expenditure, I want to reiterate that the Babono constituency is alive and well. And the people in the constituency, they are determined to give Babono what we call a new look. And one of the philosophies in the development of Babono is to create Babono Central as a little hub, a little town, a little village. And with that, Mr. Speaker, we will require some basic facilities in Babono Central, and I will be seeking the support of Ministry of Local Government, the support of Ministry of Infrastructure, the support of Ministry of Tourism, and the support of Ministry of Education. All these ministries have a role to play in what happens in Babolo Central. One, we are actually looking at repurposing the library so that we create some ICT um, center as well as providing some government services in that building. The Ministry of Infrastructure has to assist with redesigning the roads in Babolo Central and the Ministry of Local Government and Ministry of Economic Development will assist in refurbishing and modernizing the Babono Multipurpose Center that will provide some key government services to the people in Babono. So with that, Mr. Speaker, we will see a transformation. We have started some work through the CDP and some extensive work has taken place in the constituency, but with the support of the relevant ministries, we are going to achieve a lot more. Mr. Speaker, part of the plan is to ensure that at least nine of the communities in Barbodo, we have established structure, we have a plan for development, and with that structure, we establish about 18 development committees. Each community has their development committee. And with these development committees, we are going to establish what we call some signature projects. So in Fawasa, Mr. Speaker, we will have the sporting village in Fawasa. In Lage, we have to improve the sporting facility. And Mr. I want to address Minister of Education. We are yet to commission or officially open the Lage Combined School. That is a big project in Babolo that is completed, but just waiting for the CDB for the um, official commissioning and handing over of that. It's a state of the art, it's a smart school, and it's one of the most modern primary schools. Um, in the plateau area, I know Ministry of Tourism is looking at some tourism project there, and some areas in Maki. In Bogis, we are actually building that community and creating that level of awareness and support for the people of Bogis. In Debara, the Minister of Youth and Sports has promised to help us with the playing field at Debara. In Gara, we are still waiting for that early childhood center. This is a community that really needs support. In Balata, we have the market. In Timon, we have an unfinished product project um, at the Timon Human, the Human Resource Center that is under the court. And as I said, in Barbono Central, we will have the little town and the little village. Mr. Speaker, all I do now is to continue to work with my cabinet colleagues. Um, I, I, I believe heavily in the member for Castries East and Prime Minister who uses a calculator, which I believe is fair. It is fair and just. And when he applies the calculator, I am reassured that Babono will get his fair share of this budget. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, among our cabinet colleagues, 
We do not fight each other. We cooperate and we support each other. And I always go by the principle of the geese. When a flight of geese is moving to a destination, the leader always look out for the weakest one, the one that's left behind, and will put his wings under it and help that last one until all of them make the flight. We are not the ones that say the weakest one stay behind and let us fly with the strongest one. And I support that principle in this government. And as I face the challenges I had, I can make it clear in this house that the Prime Minister make sure he check on the weakest one and he put his wings to make sure we fly together. And today, this is why I'm here to speak so that the entire flock of geese get to the final destination. Mr. Speaker, the estimates of revenue and expenditure, I came here hoping that we would have a debate. But I realize we are having a discussion because the budget is so good that there is nothing to debate about. And therefore, some persons who should have challenged certain things in the debate have refrained from doing so. So therefore, I do not want to engage in any item or any activity that is a non-debate, but I have presented the case for the Barbado constituency, and I hope during the policy debate, Mr. Speaker, I will be able to speak a little more eloquent on the ministry that the Prime Minister had assigned me in terms of a number of policy decisions that are taken in that direction, and I will speak to that. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to reassure you that I'm committed to the ideals of this government, the realistic and practical budget, and I understood from the other side that there was a surplus of 100 million. Mr. Speaker, if you have a surplus of 100 million, I can assure you that you are starting with something. At least you don't have to go and borrow this 100 million if there is a surplus of 100 million. So with that, Mr. Speaker, I believe the government is on the right track. We are halfway mark, and the St. Lucian people are listening, they are following, and they know what is fact and what is fiction. They know what is right and what is wrong. And what we have to continue to do is to ensure that we keep them on the right track, we give them the right information, so that they can take the right decisions at the right time in their own interests and in the interests of St. Lucia. With this, Mr. Speaker, I lend my full support to the estimates of revenue and expenditure as presented by the member for Castries East and the Honorable Prime Minister of St. Lucia. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Leader of government business. Mr. Speaker, it's prime time, and I was hoping at least the opportunity would be taken to speak at a time when most St. Lucians are watching the televisions. But since there are no takers, Mr. Speaker, can I beg that this house stands suspended until 9 a.m.? 
Mr. Speaker. Um, we shall see. 9 a.m. in the morning. Members, before the, I put the question, I'd like to say something. Early this morning, I abruptly stopped the member for Castries Southeast. I could have done it if a little more decorum. It didn't strike me as being so rough at the time, but upon reflection, I could have given him one minute to wrap up. I am not too big to apologize, and I want to apologize. I want to apologize to the member for Castries Southeast. Secondly, we are again suspending to nine. At nine today, there were only four members present. Excluding me, by the way, I left my home at 8.05 for what is, a normally, what is normally a 10 minute drive. And 40 minutes later, I was still by government house telephoning the attorney general to tell him I'll be late. So I want to suggest, like me tomorrow, we make an effort to leave earlier so we can begin on time tomorrow. Members, the question is that this house do stand suspended until 9 a.m. tomorrow, Thursday, 28th March, 2024. I now put a question. As many as of that opinion say aye. aye. As many as of a contrary opinion say no. I think the eyes have it. The eyes have it. Sitting suspended. All rise. Okay, well, we have just witnessed the end of day one of the debate on the 2024-2025 estimates of revenue and expenditure. The 2024-2025 estimates of revenue and expenditure is dubbed the year of infrastructure with a budgetary figure of $1,894,110,880. Today we heard presentations from the MPs for Castro Southeast, Denver South, Nico North Brosley, Denver North, Sufre Forsasha, Chosel Saltibus, Castro North, and ended with a Babano. It was indeed uh, Lawrence a delight to see the Member of Parliament for Babano, Honorable Dr. Virginia Albert Poyot, uh, in the house today and not just sitting but actually making a presentation. Um, she is still in recovery after falling in Sydney a few weeks ago, um, necessitating hospitalization. During the various presentations, we would have heard about several ongoing and new projects and programs to come on stream in the various constituencies. Um, among them, um, the areas highlighted are with fisheries, business investment, cemetery expansion, town and village council, sporting facilities, education, school bus subsidy, sustainable development, construction of a fire station in Astoria Canneries, an ecotourism project in the Pavlo constituency, improved access to land for housing and agriculture, bodily correction of facility improvement and image rehabilitation, retrofitting of the Orange Grove Plaza at Bradouage uh, to house government offices, uh, the refurbishment of the former George Shaw Secondary School um, to be um, reassigned as a juvenile center for boys and girls. And um, some of the good news for, for the South, Lawrence, um, that is for the, the residents of Viewport. Um, this, this, this morning, the, the Member of Parliament for Sufre, for Sajak, was also the Minister for Commerce, spoke of the decentralization of government services. And in that regard, she spoke of um, the Ministry of Commerce opening its doors in, in Viewport. And we also have the Opposition Member of Parliament for Schwizer Saltibus. Um, during his presentation, he proffered a suggestion for the government to consider water subsidies for farmers during this fiscal year as a means of uh, providing more assistance to farmers uh, that he believes would allow farmers to cope with the dry um, season. Mr. Schulitzer, I'm going to talk about the first war 
discussion à ce budget là, budget à pour l'année salaire, il a changé budget à un valet. Il a estimé un billion, 8,14 millions, 110 000, 800 dollars. Ça, c'est le budget à pour l'année salaire. Et bien, aujourd'hui, nous attendons une contribution pour le premier ministre de M. Joachim Henry, même par la main pour Castro Sud Est. Et bien, quand nous prions aujourd'hui, l'explicité de Boutan, Joachim Henry, pas avant l'heure, mais il n'y a pas de question pour ça. Et bien, il n'y a pas de pour ça. Il dit qu'il n'y a pas de question pour ça pour sa fin de contribution. Mais, j'ai fait avec les apologies pour ça, il n'y a pas trop pour ça pour apologies pour l'air pour ça. Après ça, nous tenons Alfred Prosper, en parlant pour Denis Soud, qui aussi fait la présentation, et bien côté aussi, après, après, Alfred Prosper, nous tenons Chamber Nobot, en parlant pour Mikonov. Oui, pour Mikonov, Chamber Nobot. Et après, les après-midi, il y a Kenson Kazemi, Kenson Kazemi va aller. Avec Kenson Kazemi, c'est même pas le même pour gros Et bien, il parle de la facilité sportive qui est à attention. En chai, c'est. C'est. Facilité sur la carte à attention avec le Darren Sammy. Aller pour. World Cup Cricket fin over. Et avec nous, c'est Sean Edwards. Sean Edwards, qui c'est même pas le même pour Denry North. Il parle à son achat et bagaille, il parle à son contribution pour sa fête sustainable. Il aussi parle à son contribution pour l'école, l'école, euh, les, les recettes pour grand monde. Il aussi parle à son appointement, il y a un vice-président, il y a un vice-principal pour l'école secondaire Vieux-Fort. Et avec Palace sur l'argent gouvernement Kaibay, c'est le rôle là pour ça, c'est à ligne du conseil. Nous avons aussi Emma Hippolyte, même pas la main pour souffrir, qui parle sur le libre CG, qui parle sur un chien monde qui a fait application pour support. Il aussi parle sur le chien business 7 qui a produit des fois des marchandises. Et avec le gouvernement qui a assisté en ligne de technologie. Aussi bien parler sur le Taïwan qui a assisté avec parler sur les affaires SIC, Fine Force, avec des huit et quatre assistances, excès pour le gouvernement. Ok, well, I guess that will do it um, for this evening. It has been a long day, you would agree. Um, so, Julita Peter and Lawrence Adon signing off for today. Be sure to join us via the National Television Network and the Government of St. Lucia Facebook page and YouTube channel for day two of the debate from the House of Parliament. And of course, it begins at night.